Yo. Yo, what's up, man? Can you hear me? How's it going, bro? Yeah, good, man. How are you? You good? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice, man. How's uh, how's the, the strange lockdown period treating you? Oh, it is uh, uh, fucking great, actually. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I, I am... I'm a psycho, so it's great to have something just force me in my house to just like relax. Um, I've like, I've ne- this is just like the chillest time I've ever had, pretty much, um, to just get paid and do nothing. And my, my life's fucking crazy all the time, I feel like. So it's great that this is just destroying New York and not destroying me. And I just get like some time off. That's how I feel. Fair one, man. No, I can understand how, that. How, how how about how about you over there? Yeah, it's it's a bit strange. Like we're we're under pretty strict guidelines at the moment, where we're only allowed out the house for an hour a day. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much like what we're what we're doing here, at least in New York City. It seems like everywhere in America is fine, except New York City's fucked. Um, so where it's it's pretty crazy here there's definitely nothing to do and we haven't we've definitely been in for a long ass time but i don't man like i said i don't mind the isolation i haven't had this much time to myself like to breathe in a long time so i'll fucking take it (laughs) yeah no i can appreciate that man i know what you mean and yeah i know the feeling it's kind of given me chance to to get this started and yeah. Yeah. Facts. I mean, that's, that's, that's the other thing too, is this is just like my, my biggest thing with battling is I think, especially recently and especially with the way that I battle is I, I don't take a battle unless I'm going to absolutely do great. And life is really fucking busy. Um, and battling's hard to, to guarantee like, Hey, I'm definitely going to be really good. Um, and it's like, this is just so fucking great because now I get to work on shit. Um, <laughs> I never get to work on shit. That's my biggest complaint always is like, I don't ha- have time to prep, you know? So I, this is, now I'm like sitting here, I'm like writing for everyone. This is going to be great. <laughs> nice, man. I like it. I like it a lot. And then like jumping straight into the questions for you, man, like how was it that you got into battle rap from the beginning then? Yeah, so my um my story my story is pretty pretty fucking interesting because it's definitely a testament to Lex. Like I think um I think Lex so like people say, Oh, Lex recruited me to to I battle or like Lex Luther recruited me here. There a lot of us we're not recruited from another league. We were recruited to battle rap by Lex. Like Lex recruited us to battle rap. Like Eddie, I was not on a different league. Um, there was no Eddie. I <laughs> like there was no Sean O'Shawn. I've known Lex since I was 12. Lex was one of my closest friends when I was like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, and we used to rap and straight up like in middle school, Like, people didn't know Lex rapped. Like, I was the one who rapped because I would freestyle. And so I would do that shit everywhere we went, like, in public and stuff. And Lex would not even rap in public. Like, no one even knew. And then I moved away. And then Lex moved. And then, you know, years and years and years and years passed. And, like, Lex just kept rapping. And I really didn't do shit with it. Um, I just would freestyle when I got drunk or high or whatever. And um, Lex just, like, kept going at it and like he used to ask me like yo come on like you know you should you should do this you should jump in you should like try out on a league and then like I didn't even follow anything related to battle rap other than Lex's battles like I'd watch Lex's battles because he was like my boy from growing up and that was really it and then slowly just from watching Lex's battles I watched like a little bit of KOTD and then whatever else And then, you know, just over the years, like, he would ask me, he would be like, come on, you know, debut, debut, debut. And then finally, eventually, when he got I battle, and it just fucking, it was, I was like, holy shit, like, okay, everyone here is really the best. um, And this is just me rapping with my friends. So 
I guess whatever. Like I have no fucking excuse now at this point. It's been it's it's become just like too easy. Um, like what more can you ask? What when I have like Lex running such a successful league and he's like, yeah, come on, like I will set you up with you know the best people you could possibly ever want to battle against. So yeah, for me it's like ev- everything has been through Lex. Like people say in Lex we trust and all shit like that. And I understand it, but it's always like surreal for me to hear it. Cause I'm like, I've, I've just known him since I was a fucking child. So when I hear like Dale Denton say it and he's just like a kid in Indiana that raps in his room, you're like, damn, this is crazy. <laughs> no, that, that's a cool story, man. And it, it kind of shows with yourself as well. Cause I mean, you've, you're a bit of a company man in that sense that you've only battled on I battle, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Honestly, there's, there's for me never been a reason not to yet. I mean, and I've had, I've like, I want to, um, I definitely am open to, to road games, especially at this point. Um, and there's definitely some like leagues I would love to go to, but I mean, when you think about it, I'm still under 10 battles. Um, I'm under 10 battles and I'm under 10 battles. And like, if at any point I was just, you know, two or three battles in and asking to go to a league and get some competition like I was going to possibly get, like the classics that I've had, uh, you know, for under 10 battles at iBattle, it just was not going to be fucking worth it for me ever. Um, So I'm like, why am I going to go do a GZ, uh, you know, when I could battle someone better (laughs) on iBattle? If Lex is going to get me someone that I'm going to get, you know, um, that's kind of been my thing for for a while now it's just been it's been like the easiest thing not to and it's in new york i didn't live in i moved back to new york last year so i wasn't when i first started battling this is my this is pretty much i just finished two years now this is like how i'm thinking about it and um my first year i didn't even live in new york i moved back to new york new york is where i grew up I have fucking all of my friends, my family, people are in New York. I battle in New York, like 20 of my friends that don't even know about battle rap come out just because I'm battling, you know, I don't get that anywhere else. So so for me, I think like so much I battle is about the, the party element of it is just like, I just want to be with a bunch of my friends um, and then like everyone at I battle, just, we're just like fucking rapping, having a good time, you know, uh, like, and I think the stage we, everyone has respected the stage so much this year. Um, and I think like, it's an incredible, incredible stage, but it's just a fucking family and a party. So, you know, it's, there's been just no reason to leave. I've been real cozy pretty much. <laughs> I completely understand, man. And like, for, for me at the moment, like. I've said this on a few episodes now, like iBattle is probably the league that I'm following the most right now, just because, like you said, even though I've not been to an event yet, it's just the atmosphere like on camera really adds to the, the battles. And like I also don't feel like they release any bad battles either. So it's just what anything iBattle releases right now, I'm going to be watching it pretty much. I, I've, I've loved it over the last few years. Yeah, I think I think it's crazy what what has happened. You know, I think Lex has Lex has built a league around certain principles. You know, like he's a battler himself, so I think he thinks like a battler and he looks after battlers. But also, he's it's just always we just always are gonna want to have a good time. We would rather have a battle thrown in like the back of a fucking trap house um, where we're going to have like an amazing time than like some bougie ass venue where they're like patting you down and telling you, you got to leave by nine or whatever. Um, you know, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely not our vibe, but I think what's crazy too is just how, how the bar, how we've just like raised the bar in terms of quality. Like when I, and that's really the thing I, I debuted in my first couple battles. I'm not going to say they were bad, Um, but I didn't approach them with a level of seriousness that I even understood was possible for a fucking rap battle. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Um, 
you know, I, I think like, especially as someone who, who is like a freestyle guy, uh, it's like a lot of those early battles, like, yeah, I would write some stuff and freestyle some stuff and it was good. Um, but the stage, man, like local small leagues, at least in the U.S., it'll be like you got like an event and it's a bunch of people on your league battling and then like maybe like the Saurus, you'll pay the Saurus to battle like one of the best guys on your league and that's like your event. And then like what I battle became was just every battle should be a headlining battle on a smaller league, but it was just like it had the feel of a smaller league. But it's like all of a sudden like, every battle on a card is like a main event small league card or every battle on a card is someone who's touched down on a main stage somewhere versus someone who's about to or who should be stepping down on a main stage they just haven't yet or don't want to or whatever um it's that it's that quality and people aren't fucking up like that that's the thing that fucking kills me the most is people don't fuck up like people don't even fuck up I have to fucking throw a rebuttal in and I can't even stumble a little bit because nobody fucks up at iBattle anymore. Um, Cause that's just how it's like, that's how it's been. That's what the bar is, is, is at is like, if you, if you even want to fucking spot um, to, to matter in that league, you got to be really good now, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. I completely agree with that. And yeah, it's, it's just been like in terms of, battle rap as a whole for me so like I, I got into it around the time that don't flop started um so i got to see kind of don't flops rise in that sense but right. king of the dot and url and leagues like that had already kind of established themselves and i don't really think anybody's come around and and done anything big since that point so being able to watch what i battle was doing like all these years later is it's incredible to see man i love it but like in terms of of yourself then so were you like attending events before you decided to kind of jump in the ring and battle <sighs> um not not much um not much actually my first event was maybe a month before I debuted. Um, it was TakeOver 4 or 5, the one where it was Jeff vs. Goods and Megadeth vs. Jack Tripper. It was pretty much the, the conception of Water League and Sky League was us hanging out at that, um, that event, pretty much. So that was the month before I debuted. Um, I had, like I said, I'd watched a lot of Lex's battles. And at that point I had been watching iBattle and I had been watching other stuff. I'd been watching King of the Dot. I'd been watching Don't Flop. I had seen a whole bunch of stuff by the time I debuted, but I, had, I hadn't I had had that in-room experience until a month before I debuted. And until my, like, I think maybe my debut battle was probably the the third event that I went to, maybe the fourth event that I went to yeah right okay nice and but I had I was I was I was lucky that summer besides from takeover that summer uh Bangs was battling daylight and Lex was uh debuting on URL he was having his PG versus zigzag or yeah zigzag is that his name whatever the hell his name was he smoked him but uh, I got to see them. I got to see them prep. And I think watching the process, watching Bangs prep was fucking unreal. Because Bangs is just a, a machine. I mean, he had, Bangs prepping for daylight, he had close to nothing five days before. And I just watched him spend like every day, he's sleeping on Lex's couch for like a week. And I remember him every day just like writing. And I was like, watch the whole thing just develop over the course of five days. And I, I like watched him prep it, watched him write it. Uh, you know, we go to the venue and so much shit happens and bangs just like, you know, he rebuttals. And this is really, it taught me how to, it, it, it changed. It like kind of informed my approach to how I try and freestyle. Like he, he was so comfortable playing around with shit that other battlers are super mechanic about like battlers become super mechanic about like, I need to know like my word and my position in the verse to the point where the words kind of almost don't mean anything anymore to them when they're saying it. 
and Bangs was just like he moved shit around. He like he moved shit around in his rounds. He made things relevant. He had a rebuttal. There's a crazy rebuttal he has. Um, I don't know if you, you're familiar with this battle, but he has a crazy rebuttal where um, Daylight says something about claps. He has everyone clap and and says like you know uh, have everyone clap it up for Bangs. That's how many claps you're gonna hear and like everyone's clapping. And so Bangs does this rebuttal where he does this, uh, you know, it's, I keep clapping and then he claps like when they don't pass me the ball or something like that. But he, whatever, it was a really, it was a really good rebuttal and it was a physical rebuttal to what Daylight did, but he, he put it in to a scheme that I had heard him do like before and he just kept two of the punch he just kept the punches pretty much took out the filler and just replaced the filler with like two rebuttal punches and i was like jesus christ like that was fucking ridiculous like it was it was punch after punch after punch and he just had so much control over like this is my material i'm gonna do whatever the fuck you know i'm gonna do whatever with it i'm gonna be comfortable i'm gonna respond to the battler um i'm gonna make this like a dialogue um and that was I think that informed me a lot. Um, so I think like as much as, I think you need in-room experience. I think people who have been in the room, someone like Bob Barker, who was fucking taking pictures in the room, in-room experience is always gonna make you better. Um, like, I think that helps, but I do think I did have like a lot of insight. You know, I didn't come into this super cold. I don't wanna pretend like I came into this as cold as possible. You know, like I definitely had a lot of insight and a lot of experience seeing how people do it and how people prep. Definitely. Yeah. And it's like with what you said about bangs, it, it always, it absolutely amazes me how people are just able to kind of throw rebuttals in mid round, like being able to, yeah, that's me too. It's literally, I mean, so it's, it's, I pride myself on it and I think, I think me and I think Louis have pushed people in I battle like stubbornly to you need to rebuttal like everything needs to like we just and I think it really has gotten to the point where everyone is so good where everyone does know how to punch and everyone does know how to you know um, deliver a bar where it's you do need every advantage just to stick out from the rest you know from everyone else Um, and to me I mean that's my favorite my favorite part the way that I look at it is this is how I approach it um, in terms of like in terms of freestyling i want all of the people who don't watch battle rap who aren't sure if we're in a written era or not like or if this is still eight mile to like them to be able to not tell if any of the shit that i said was written or not you know um like i think like we should be able as battlers to seamlessly weave in and out of our written material and freestyle stuff and frame our written material in ways that is making it a back and forth. Um, like that's, it's just a more entertaining fucking narrative. Like it's a more entertaining dialogue if people are going back and forth. Um, and it's not that hard. It's really, and it, it's just a matter of guts. I think a lot of the time it's just people are afraid to try it out. Um, and you only get one shot. You know, I don't want to fucking sound like an idiot right now and sound like I'm quoting eight mile, but like, it, you know, you only get one fucking at bat, and I know people practice this shit in the mirror and stuff. Um, but that's why that's why I say prep with like some fucking looseness, so that you know, like I'm gonna wait and see what this motherfucker says or does or what the fuck is going on, and I'm just gonna try and weave things in and out. Makes sense, man. And yeah, like just people that are able to like re- force a rebuttal in in between their written material as well, like. Just being able to rebuttal at say the start or the end of your round once you before you start your actual rehearsed material or whatever is good enough, but being able to kind of weave it in with your your actual written material as well it just baffles me like it's oh yeah that's and that's and that that's the magic to it i think and I think that's that's really that's the difference that's i try and preach that that's the difference that is the magic to it. It. like that is what makes it um and i think the way so the way i when i when i prepped for real sick the way i prepped for real sick was literally um i had my first was mostly 
85% set. Like my first was set. Um, I knew at the end I was going to leave room to potentially freestyle um, because I had a feeling I was going to be able to get off potentially some physical stuff, which I was. Um, but like I figured that was the blueprint for my first was pretty much set. My second and my third, so much of my material, um, I wanted to be able to be responsive to his and I wanted to leave room for freestyles. So I honestly had no idea if like what material would get off and what wouldn't for my second and third. Um, I was I was running those rounds with people like all day and they were coming out a little different every single time. Um, there was shit that I just didn't get off in that battle because Real Sick kind of just didn't do certain things that I thought maybe he would that were going to cue me to say some stuff. And I never even got those bars off. I never even went back to them. Um, but that was a battle where I was like, I was all about that. I was like, I want it to be, I want to be weaving in and out of freestyle and written stuff to the point where people can't tell. And it's crazy, man. Real Six brother actually comes up to me after, um, after the battle and he goes, he goes, yo, I need to know, man, was it, was that written or, uh, was that a, did you make that up on the spot that that rocket science rebuttal thing because he said he had like a rocket science scheme and so yeah. then I, I i i in in like mid-round i weaved in i was like rocket science it was something like rocket science rocket science i'll run up on the challenger squad and blast a missile and leave space in your circle like the nasa symbol and he was like what's that did you just do that and i was like i was like no i was like it was i i've worked that out before I didn't know I was going to use it. Um, I've worked that out before, you know, like I've, I've, I've wanted to, it's, if, if I hear, if I have some, there's so much shit that I've, that have just never made the cut. Um, you know, there's so many different little bar constructions that like are just, we're 70% there. And if you give me a little something, I'm just going to try and try and fucking do it, you know? And that's, that's where the mid round ones I feel real comfortable with are just little quick jabs. Um, I think like one, two, like just in really quick, hard like that. I think with outsider, I had a couple mid round ones that were really fun. Um, yeah, they mid round rebuttals are the way to go, but then you battle someone like Louie and it's really interesting because I battled Louie and something that I had to do when I battled Louie was forcefully rebuttal in the beginning of the rounds because Louie does that every battle and it almost looks stupid if you don't if he does it good um and I think like I worry that sometimes slipping a rebuttal um I you know I worried that slipping a rebuttal in against Louie mid-round if someone doesn't catch it they might think like I didn't respond or something so when I battle Louie I actually my I started every round with a rebuttal to whatever his rebuttal was. So whatever he opened with, I opened with. Like, so if he rebuttaled, like if he said something, then I tried to open the next round with that in the beginning because I thought it, I needed it in the beginning. But honestly, the beginning is usually the last place I want to rebuttal because my beginning, I usually have something set up good. Um, you know, I have something that I like. <laughs> So it's definitely, it's definitely usually I like minute stuff or if I'm having a bad round, I will just pull the trigger on something at the end. And then, you know, <laughs> hope Makes it goes sense. off. <laughs> yeah, man, I like it. And like, in, in terms of like your battles so far though, man. So like for me personally, the first battle of yours that I actually saw was you versus homeschool. Um, so the outsider battle and like the, the Q Morgan battle I had to, to kind of go back and watch at a later date. But sure. what's, what's been your favorite battle that you've been a part of so far? <sighs> My favorite battle that I've been a part of, um, probably Louis, um, even though it wasn't ideal, either, either real sick or Louis. I'm a, I think one, I'm, the way that I am, I always favor whatever my latest things are. Um, I just think I've been changing so much um, with this that like every one of my battles is naturally going to be better. Like my favorite battle would have been Blue Easy if I would have been able to battle him because my stuff there would have probably been the best because it was 
like the last time I had a chance to work on something super hard. But I think that I think I think Real Sick was a battle that I had time. Um, I had time to prep for it. I knew I had like a task at hand. I knew it was going to be hard. Um, and I was like, all right, let me go super crazy. And then we, we put on like a crazy, crazy classic and it was great. Me versus Louis. Um, me versus Louis, I think will probably always be, at least for now, will be my personal favorite battle. Um, the thing with me versus Louis, so, you know, I came off real sick and Lex's idea was like real sick. He wanted real sick to get Excel and he wanted me to get someone who was very like a similar level, you know, vet type thing, which eventually would become that blue easy thing. Um, but right away, man, like I wanted, I wanted to battle Louis. Like I, Louis had an amazing, amazing, amazing year. Louis is also someone who I'm close with, who I'm boys with. And I haven't had a chance to battle someone who I'm boys with, who I think is really good. And I've just watched, I watched Louis keep fucking people up. Like I watched Louis beat people who I thought were really, really good. I watched Louis beat reverse lie. I watched Louis beat, you know, I, I think the tripper battle maybe could go either way, but I, I edged Louis. There was so many battles that I just thought Louis kept with Jables. Jables has made my favorite battler. I thought Louis for one, I had Louis winning. Um, and I'm watching Louis beat people's asses pretty much every fucking event. Um, so I really wanted, I definitely wanted Louis and Lex was like, and then Lex said it to me before I even said it to Lex because that's how it works. And I'm like, yeah, that, dude, I've been thinking the same fucking thing. So we set it up and, you know, I prepped like a psycho for real sick and I planned to do that for Louis. I planned to do that for Louis. And we booked the battle and a week passes and I was going on a family reunion and I was literally going to go there and just write, you know, just smoke weed all day and just write battle rap shit for Louis Valentine. That was going to be what I was doing. That was like my plan. And I literally two days into the vacation, um, my my dad and my mom were only going to be there for the weekend and then the rest of my family was going to go back and I was going to stay there for a week literally just fucking right and two days in uh my dad he just dies right right in front of us he just fucking dies man and it was super sudden super crazy so I'm like thinking like I have some time off I'm about to chill and write for Louie and all of a sudden this shit happens and it just like is hectic as hell. Um, so I gotta, I gotta like plan a funeral. I gotta give a fucking eulogy. I gotta deal with a million and one things. Um, and I'm like, I got this battle with Louis. And so I'm like, I sh we should just probably cancel it because I'm clearly not gonna be able to write for this now. And I talked to Louis. I, I said to Louis and Lex, I'm like, yo, should we just do one round? Like, I could, you know, should we just do one round this way? I don't even have to like stress out or something. And um, actually, Sweeney was in the chat, too. It was me, Lex, Sweeney, and Louie. And Louie was like, honestly, dude, like, we're both rebuttal guys, you know, the top rebuttal guys that I battle. I would rather us wait to do three. And I was like, honestly, we're the top rebuttal guys that I battle. Let's just fucking do it. Um, who cares? And we, so, and then the whole time, me and Louie were just spitting fucking bars at each other, talking shit in between having this like moment where we're just like, all right, fuck it. We'll just do it. Um, so that battle ended up like, so having that battle and my first round during that battle, I sort of addressed my dad dying. It is like personally just one of the coolest things um, I think that I've ever done. I think I've done a lot of cool shit in my life, but I think watching, I, I know, I know what, um, you know, the pressure of those types of situations do to people. I also know how fucking hard battle rap is. I also know how hard, um, battling someone like Louie is. So yeah, my, that whole battle, I think is really close to my heart. And I think I, my first round was pretty unanimously round of the night, um, on a card that had like everyone in the world on it. Um, and that that battle ended up actually being the first battle to ever drop on the iBattle app. It was the first battle that they ever dropped, like first drop. Um, so that's yeah, well, so, and, and it's and and like again, and Louis is Louis is my boy. 
Um, I'm pretty fucking mean to him in that battle, but he is definitely my boy. Uh, we would definitely not seem like friends based on some of the stuff that we say, but um, so yeah, so that's, that's like, that's, that's a fun one. And uh, I definitely, I definitely love that one. I think like, as of right now, I think me and real sick is such a, it's just a fucking, it's textbook beautiful. It should be like inspected. Um, it's like a classic in both directions. I think that that's, you know, still overall in terms of tidiness and just different things, probably, you know, the best battle I've been a part of. Um, but me versus Louis is pretty fucking crazy. Definitely, man. And like, for, for me personally, I have to go with real sick because I think it's, it, it would probably make my top five battles ever, man. Like, I thought it was battle of the year. Yeah, it was incredible, but you know, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people have said that it is, it's you know, that it's up there like that. Um, thank you, man. That's really good to hear. Mike P versus Dunch is, I think, better than it. Which, which sucks. This is why it sucks because I think, I think like if we were doing, it depends how you're viewing a battle. Um, and I hate how like Dunch and Mike P are just two of my favorite battlers ever. Um, and they had such an amazing battle. But if you were in terms of, if we're inspecting certain quality aspects, I, I say this a lot, man, as much as battlers are battling, there's two battles going on. There's like this, this battle that most people see, um, you know, the 90% of viewers that are watching the battle. And then there's the, what like, writers and performers truly understand is happening and is going on um and i think like when i was writing for real sick i was i had in mind very much like i want this kid to think i beat him um i do not want him you know like that is something and i knew he was gonna have i knew every word i knew he was not gonna waste a word um and i wasn't gonna waste so i wasn't gonna waste a word and I think, I think that's, Lex talks about it being, you know, one of his favorite battles of all time. And he says, it's, it's the hungriness, you know, it's the hungriness, but I think it's really, it's the hungriness that just informs how fucking good it is. Um, Cause like both of us have to take advantage of anything we possibly could. Like I had to seriously, I had to sit back and like, I had to think about it when I was prepping for him. It was just like, what is every possible advantage I can have? What are the things I'm going to need to match of his? What am I not going to be able to match? And I think, I think if you look at it at the end of the day, if you look at it word for word, it's crazy how many just density of bars from both of us. Um, density of bars and just layers, layers and layers and layers. And that's what's crazy about him is he, he, can, he can deliver shit that holds up on paper. It is not fucking simple. And he delivers it super clear and super for you um you know just like to consume and get it um which is which is nuts and that battle that battle is a battle where like word for word if you go back the more you rewatch it the more you're gonna find shit the more you're gonna realize like holy shit that's something else that's another thing that's another thing oh my god definitely yeah and it's it is just it really is just top tier stuff from from both of you in that battle like it's it's incredible, man. But, like, I love the Louis battle as well. And, like, you know, I can appreciate in that sense why that's such a special battle for you. And, like, obviously my, my condolences for, for what you went through at the time. And, like, as, just as a fan, like, the utmost respect for, for still being able to go ahead with the battle, man. That's, that's incredible on your end. Well, what's, I'll tell you another really interesting story related to it, which just shows you just uh, battle rap is such a fucking weird world. So at that, at the real sick battle, real deal is there. He's battling Dago. So I, I meet real deal. It's the first time I ever met real deal. And, um, you know, we kick it, whatever. Then my dad, uh, dies and I have to do the battle. And so I hit up real deal. Cause I was telling him, man, cause like when he, cause he did a, a similar thing when he, when his sister 
pass. I don't know if you know this story uh, with him when that happened years ago. No, not not. I don't know it in depth. I, I'm aware so of. So pretty it. much. So yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to miss say anything. So to generalize as much as I could, I'll say um, that like he he had a battle. He was you know I think his sister died when he was in the air flying to the battle, um, and he like real deal still had a clean performance. You know, like did the battle like everything was straight. So I'm prepping for my dad and I'm thinking about that, you know? So I'm like, so I hit up real deal and we're talking about it and like, you know, whatever, um, you know, he like just checked in about how I was feeling and whatever. And I just said, man, you know, whatever. Then I battle Louie. It's great. Fast forward. We're going to fucking massacre me, Eddie, Lex, Red Flag and Cortez driving up to Massacre to watch Real Deal versus Chilla. And now this time his fucking dad is in the hospital and I'm watch. I literally within, I guess, yeah, within a month, within two months of my dad dying, I battled Louie and Real Deal battle Chilla with his dad getting sick and I fucking went to Boston and watched Real Deal win the title in Boston against Chilla with his dad being in the hospital. It was crazy. It was, it's wild how like it all, how that shit ended up happening. Everything in battle rap is super fucking serendipitous to me. It doesn't make sense. I'm pretty sure I just have been on the same acid trip for a couple of years. Yeah, I can appreciate that, man. And it's, yeah, I mean, with Real Deal as well, like he, I don't know if you're aware, but essentially, Shotty Horrors League over here, so Premier Battles, they they did an event in the summer last year called Apex, which the card was basically supposed to be Real Deal versus Jay Short, Shotty Horror versus Tay Rock, um, Bob New Jersey Twerk versus Bobby Rex, Chef Treads versus Shocks the Rebel, uh, and then uh, Soul Soul and Mike P. Right? Was was that the Soul and Mike P. card? Yeah, Soul Mike P. and J C. versus Tony D. And out of those six battlers, Tay Rock, Mike P. Twerk. Chef Trez and JC all pulled out and pretty much all took the deposits as well, from what I'm aware of. Um, the only person that didn't cancel that was originally meant to be on that card was Real Deal. And Real Deal, it was, I think, about, I want to say about two weeks, three weeks after his, his dad unfortunately passed away. So if anybody had reason to kind of you know, cancel the battle, then he was the only one that had a justifiable reason. And he still flew all the way to the UK and put on a phenomenal performance. And it was, I've just got the, yeah. the utmost respect for, you know, the, the pair of you on that front. Like, I can't imagine what you went through leading up to those battles. And it was incredible to see. Man, I really, I, I told, I said to Lex, because Lex always, um, Lex was so big on spearheading this, like, uh, what the fuck? I don't remember what he called it. Whatever it was, this agreement between all the small leagues that if you know show one, that you get banned for a couple months or whatever. Um, I think I, I've always wanted to do, I just want to start giving free pay-per-views to fans that just beat the shit out of battlers that take deposits. Like if, if you owe a league a deposit, I want to put like, that's the rule. I will buy your I battle pay-per-view. If you beat the shit out of whoever that fan is, I don't even care if it's I battle. If you just like jacked a deposit from a league, you should just like fans should get to beat you up and get free stuff. That's how it should go. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, Dude, I there's that. just, there's just not a lot of like this is this is what it comes down to is battle there's no one is going into battle rap for the money because there's not a lot of it so it's it's an it's an enterprise that is built on 
labor being rewarded usually disproportionately. So every fucking resource matters. So it's like, man, I just, I hate that shit. 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 Um, yeah, me too, man. Completely agree. And like, there's certain... Sucks. Sucks. I mean, I got, look, I got, I just got fucked over by, by, uh, you know, a URL guy. I have not, so I, I, I really can't say much. Dude, Blue Easy twice, twice, twice. And, and someone like me who, um, you know, I, I do, I, I am prepping and I'm prepping in a way where we postponed the first time. And, you know, he gave me like a week's notice where he's like, yeah, man, like we got to push it back. Um, and like, talk to me about it. And like, you know, or talk to Lex about it. Didn't talk to me about it, but talk to Lex about it. You know, it was like, yeah, like, can we push it back? What do you think? Like, is this, and I'm like, sure. Cause I don't mind a little more time to prep, whatever. Like I, I didn't have my shit memorized at that point. Like I didn't, you know, whatever. Um, but that that started the clock again so i like it was fucking another that's another month and a half until we had the next date that i reworked material and also wasn't working on other shit you know um and then he fucking no showed that one so i i understand man that was probably you know hundreds hundreds of hours of of labor in in the long run <laughs> just goes nowhere yeah, and the, the second of the, the second time round, then did he just no show on the day without an explanation? No, so yeah, so what he did, so it was actually crazy. He, it was um, he stopped answering Lex. Like we like announced the new date, and right after we announced the new date, he stopped answering Lex. And then like he didn't answer Lex, didn't answer Lex, didn't answer Lex, and then. I don't know how Lex got to him somehow like a couple days before what, cause he Lex like hit the panic button and had a feeling like he was doing something sketchy. And, you know, Lex is always looking for ways around shit like that. So Lex, I don't even know how he got, he got finally got in touch with him and he told him, I don't even know what, what the excuse was the second time. I really, I don't even, I don't even know. Cause I was so annoyed and we were so like, this guy's just a fucking loser. Um, like the first time he gave like some genuine, like excuse that he was, you know, like, Oh, family shit and whatever, we'll push it back. And it was, but, but he gave us, so he gave us a couple days. Um, so he gave us a couple days and that couple days, man, shit was that fucking miserable. So first, um first like a day or two passes i'm like all right i guess i'll go to this event and i won't battle anyone and then lex calls me he's like um this is like whatever like two days before he's like yeah uh you want to battle chilla jones and i'm like what and he's like chilla said you know he would he could fill in and i'm like all right and then I start writing and then Lex hits me up two hours later. He's like, yeah, I talked to Chilla again. Chilla's like, man, I'm a workaholic. I really would rather not take this battle if possible. And I'm like, good. Like, I do not want to battle Chilla on two hours notice. Um, and, or, you know, whatever. And then we had drugs jump in and then drugs actually jumped in and we, me and drugs actually battled at five in the morning where neither of us like he got drugs got off more stuff than i got off but i was literally like mumbling couldn't get off any even like a sentence like it was it was it was not even a battle um <laughs> it wasn't even a battle so i nothing nothing came of the entire glue easy debacle pretty much um and i think all of that material so much of that material it's crazy too because so much of that material was all glue easy stuff i could not it was so much personal and then i both like me and drugs have a day prep we literally had a day prep and i rewrote for drugs and i had it down and it was good and then it was just we ended up battling too late neither of us you know had much energy and we didn't really it was just whatever so 
No, I, I can understand, man. And like, yeah, I mean, it fucking sucked at the time as well. Because to be honest, like in terms of URL as a whole, there's, um, it's probably the league that I pay the least attention to because there's only certain battlers that I I like. For me, I find that a lot of it is just. 70% of the material you hear on URL can be said to absolutely anyone. And then yeah. the direct stuff is more like terribly constructed name flips and stuff. Like right. to me, I just don't enjoy it. But Glue Easy I've... is one of the people that I'm actually a fan of and really wanted to see that battle. And like me and me and I had Sweeney on the show last week and we were saying like, we both agreed that you you kind of just need that that massive look for yourself, and I think you're going to get offers from pretty much any league to go and do a battle, man. Because like you're you really are like that good, and it's all it takes is a, a performance against someone like a Glue Easy, and yeah, and I I think I think people people have I think people have felt that thank you, and I think people have felt that like that's like I, I've, I debuted on the same day as Jables, um, and I, and right around the same time as like Mulips, and the thing is, Jables and Mulips, they've just, they've taken a lot more battles than I have in that same time frame. You know, um, I've just taken a couple less battles. Even, even you look at Real Sick, like Real Sick, since our battle, every not, not to say that things have gone wrong with where i'm at it's just been slower as to where like everything's kind of gone right with real sick he's had a couple of successful battles one after another i it's just been slower i know like once i have the opportunity it'll you know once i have someone to showcase um it'll be there and that's why i'm kind of that's where i'm kind of at now i'm kind of i'm loving this quarantine shit because it it just gives me time to actually work on material and actually think about um, some stuff and to think about maybe, you know, to write for more than one opponent, you know, that I don't even have booked potentially and to really just get some shit out there um, so that like once the world starts existing again, I can just come out swinging, um, you know, and just take advantage of the fact that like no one will have momentum. And I was, I was overdue anyway. So that's that's kind of where I'm where I'm where I'm at. I'm definitely I've never been in a rush. Um, I'm not I'm not in much of a rush because like I really don't give a shit about any kind of um, I don't I don't have much other league ambition. Like my other league ambition is to battle on fun leagues. So if there's like places I would want to travel that are fun, that are like there's cool people and other good battlers, um, I would like to battle there. I have no. I'm not trying to get on URL or King of the Dot, honestly, at all, because I there's people on iBattle I would just rather doing that, and I'd rather just be battling on iBattle um, and you know elsewhere. So like I don't have any kind of I don't have any kind of ambition where I'm like I have to build, I have to build you know, uh, I have to build something I have to build something to so that someone can. Uh, you know, so that they respect my name. I think the way that I approach it is I probably have maybe 15, 20 battles in me in, in my whole life. I don't know. Um, and if, if that's how many I have, like I'm thinking about just building my catalog and it getting better every time and just putting on a better show every time. That's just like how it is. That's how I think about it, you know? Makes sense, man. No, it, it's a good way to look at it. And I mean, like you said earlier, not that you need that big plate anyway, because I battle are pretty much, you know, giving you whatever you, you want battle-wise at the moment. And it's it's one of the most fun atmospheres event-wise in battle rap right now too. Like the the main reason that I love I battle so much, and it's kind of the reason why I enjoy watching the the King of the Dot Vancouver events and like no coast events and stuff like that like it's not like it's not just a battle rap event it's like a party with battles 
So it's it just makes it so much more fun to watch. Oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean that's like, and that's that's the thing. It's a whole. It's a fucking. It's like a weekend, you know. Um, it's just a party the whole fucking weekend, uh, and that's that's why so many events, you know we have events that are parties like we do like we did sink or swim was literally at bad luck's house and then some of it in my backyard um <laughs> you know and we'll we'll put like and and you look at that card and that card is just all top tier people and it was literally like we had jungle juice and uh you know we're getting fucked up and going in the pool fair i like it and uh like for me like i'm pretty much desperate to get over to iBattle at some point this year like I've 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 traveled quite a lot and I've still never been to North America as a whole so just coming to New York and being able to go to an iBattle event while I'm there and stuff would be like a, a pretty special thing but we uh, just need to see how the how the rest of the year pans out at the moment. It's a bit crazy, but yeah, dude, you should definitely, definitely, definitely make it make a trip. Um, that's and the other thing is like so, so many of us put so much into these events and just making the events great. Um, and like, there's so much behind the scenes that just goes on. Like, as far as people are just fucking selfless in the league. Um, you know, like everyone's willing to give money if they have it, you know, it's just, it kind of is like a self-sustaining place. It just like relies on itself. Like we, everyone takes care of everyone else and that's how the party keeps going. It's truly a fucking cult, man. It really is. Definitely. Yeah, man. I love it. And I'm in, so I, I'm actually about to start battling myself. So I'm tempted to kind of leave it towards the end of the year once I've got a few battles under my belt. And if I'm making the journey over, maybe trying to get on a card myself. But Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how things go, man. But yeah, I'm, I, I've, Sweeney was saying the other day too, like he's got a feeling that as soon as this kind of lockdown stage is over, Lex is just going to explode and put some incredible cards together. So, yep, yep, and that's why I'm like, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to be rusty the second that happens. I think, like, I, I, I always feel. I look at some of these guys and I'm like, man, y'all people just are not fucking busy in your regular lives, clearly, because you have a lot of time for battle rap, and. I think I always feel at a disadvantage. I look like I talk to people, man. Like I talk to like I I I lament with fucking like flag. Obviously, with this is the struggle, like the eternal struggle of Dunch's life. It's just there's there's no fucking time if you're a busy person. If you got a lot of shit going on, there's no fucking time. Um, so to have time right now, and then to just know that like so many people are going to be in their default slack mode um you know like i'm i'm hoping to just come out and lex throws a couple cards and i'm just do one after another after another after another real quick and just have a good like come out the come out the coronavirus i battle sean o'shawn debut definitely yeah i love it and then like I'm skipping forward through the questions a little bit, but it makes a, it makes sense to ask now. But for yourself, like if you if you were putting together a list of five battlers that you want personally to battle sometime soon, who makes that list for you? Who five? Yeah. Five. Um, probably. So I'm gonna say Chef Trez, Kang, A Ward, Mad Flex, Bangs. That's a a very solid list. I like that a lot. Kang. Yeah. I'm, do you know what? I'm not too familiar with Kang if I'm honest so he's this so like 
so he's the he's he's new at eye battle. He's gonna me and him are gonna have we'll see we'll see if anything ever happens and we'll see if by the time this is lifted if anyone battles anyone. Um but a lot of Kang just had a good battle versus Lou Cipher. Um he just beat Lou Cipher according to Lou Cipher. I actually didn't even watch it, but he just had a good battle versus Lou Cipher. He's been doing really good on Gates of the Garden and I battle lately. Uh he had a couple He's had a couple battles on iBattle lately in the last like few months, but I did a, you know, he's, I don't know if, I don't know if he called me out or if someone said that we should battle or something, but I heard it in a couple places. And then I did a poll. I did an iBattle poll of like, who do people want me to battle? And everyone said, um, everyone said him. So people seem excited about it. I don't know. I think um, he's really good. He really is good. You should check out his stuff. Um, I don't know. You know, we don't, obviously I don't have anything booked because no one has anything booked right now. Um, no. <laughs> you know, but when, when we start booking, I'm sure Le- like that's something that Lex is going to want to do. Um, again, like Lex wants me to get something big, obviously, but I think a lot of people want to see me versus Kang and he's really good. And I think I'm always trying to do, you know, I took like that homeschool battle when homeschool was coming up and was like going to be this like next big thing. And I think real sick was the same thing where he was coming up in I battle. He had his first battle and he was going to be this next big thing. Um, and this kid Kang is really good. And I, I like the, I like these sort of um, gatekeeper type battles. You know, people are coming into the league and being on the roster now. And like someone like homeschool, when I battled him, he wasn't homeschool yet you know he was like it it's not the same as now you look at Sean O'Shawn has battled homeschool when I was battling him he was he didn't battle Dago he didn't battle you know he didn't have a whole bunch of these classics yet um you know real sick was sort of right before his this like breakout turning point that he's just seeing now um and I think Kang is sort of Kang is a pretty similar thing closer to real sick I think than homeschool in terms of where his development is at He's had a couple years experience, but he's just kind of been slept on. Um, he's just been on leagues where you just get a little buried. So I would definitely, I would definitely, I'm definitely watching his shit and thinking about like, you know, what I would want to say to him. Um, but as far as bigger names go or off or besides just like I battle itself people, those other names are definitely like the kind of people who I'm, I'm trying to lock it in with. I think. I think I I want diversity. I want wordplay and I want freestyle and just, I want the people who I like and who I think are good. Um, you know, I want to battle them. <laughs> yeah. I, I I can definitely appreciate that. Like it's, it make it gives you more of an incentive to write, doesn't it? But like with Kang, I mean, I've seen his father. I, I always forget this guy's name, but father, father focus. focus Confucius. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I've seen that battle, but I've, I think I've... I want to see Focus Dre Energy Dennis, like, with the hands Tai Chi or something like that, he says. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah, he's battled, uh, he's battled Dre Dennis. Apparently, well, everyone's battled Dre Dennis. And I, I guess, yeah. I guess, And I guess that's what happens when you're good and don't get to battle anyone because you're in, you're buried. You, you battle Dre Dennis because Real Sick did it too. So I guess that's what you do. <laughs> yeah 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 I don't, I, i'll never understand that guy he does like 50 battles a year you know who's not on my list dre dennis good shout very not good shout no no i don't think dre dennis needs to battle anybody anymore but yeah and mad you and mad flex fucking hell that would be incredible Madflex was was second in that poll, but obviously I would be uh, very fucking blessed if I was able to be the one who landed a Madflex battle on I battle. Um, but that's but you know if if he's battling anyone on the roster, apparently that's I I love Madflex. He's in my top five. I fucking love like I I watch his shit and say what makes this good. I want to rap like you know like this in certain ways he's really great. Um, I think he's good, but I never, I never fished for it and people put my name to it. Like 
people would say, oh, sh you know, Sean O'Shawn versus Madflex on like dream type cards. Um, and, and I fucking, and I like him. So that's, I think if there's, if anyone is interested in me battling him, then I am very fucking interested. You know, that's what, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. But I mean, he's someone who honestly, I would rather battle Gluizzi before, you know, before him, I would rather battle a couple people before I battle the Mad Flex because if I'm battling him, I'm, I'm going like, I need, I'm not battling anyone unless I think I'm going to beat them, you know? So I would, I just, he's, he's very good. Um, and I'm not going to lose. So I would, I wouldn't down the line. I would, I would love to, you know, um, hope like, but that would probably be after, after I get like, after I throw hands with a couple of these guys first. That's fair enough, man. Yeah. And it, you know, you, at the end of the day, you're still only, is it eight battles in for you now? Yeah. Eight, nine yeah. battles. Eight. Yeah. Eight. I mean, <laughs> there's the list is pretty much endless of people that you could see first. And those guys are kind of like end goals in that sense. Exactly. Hey, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I have a feeling I'm going to get one of them pretty soon. Um, I think, I think, you know, I think Lex has been, if anything, so he's definitely put me in, put me in battles that have challenged me and he, he finds the right battles for your development, like for what you need to get to work on. Um, but he hasn't given me anything you know, I've been, I've been due for something. So there's only, you know, there's only so many of those names, you know, um, there's only so many big names and there's only so many people I want to battle. So I got a feeling, especially, especially people like, like Trez and A Ward, you know, they've battled on I battle. Um, and I'm not even, it could literally, let me say something that's really fucking important. I don't give a shit who I battle and I never have like Lex figures Lex's answer is the answer that's better than yours. So yeah. I almost don't even speculate at this point. Like I'm in quarantine now. So I'm writing for different people and just different ideas and I'm just having fun. And that's the only reason I've even thought about it because normally it's just a lot easier. I literally don't even like bother with it. I'm just like, you know, what do you think makes sense? What's the right, um, what's the right move? Cause he just, he just figures it out, you know? So like at the end of the day, as much as I could say, like, yo, I think like, I think when I'm thinking about big names, these are the types of people who excite me. Lex can pull somebody out of fucking thin air that you're just like, what? Like I would never in a million years have thought that before when we were booking glue easy, um, he, he goes, he said at some point he was like, what about psychosis? I'm like, isn't he retired? He's like, I don't know. Let me check. And, and then like came back 20 minutes later, like, yeah, we can't do psychosis. But like, I never even would have thought to try and check, you know, um, like that, that, and that would have been better than anyone I could have ever came up with. So I think at the end of the day, like, I'll see who's fucking around when we're throwing an event, you know? <laughs> do you know what, man? It comes up on every single episode that I do with, anyone that's battled on i battle to be honest like i am um, spent like a an event with canal here in in cardiff last summer and like he'd not long been over to i battle to battle nonch and i love canal yeah man we uh yeah we kicked it he he was he was chilling at my crib uh a bunch at that battle when he was battling nonch Nice. Yeah, Canal's great fun, man. And he had a great he had a great time. He was loving it, man. He was having a fucking great time. I can imagine and he's yeah, a huge Canal fan, man. But he's he said like if, if any UK guys ever get the chance to go to I battle, don't pick an opponent, just let Lex do it. And pretty much everyone that I've spoken to has said exactly the same since too. So yeah, I, yeah, exactly. There, there's, there's the shit, and he, he, he puts shit together that no one ever in a million years would. I think is, is what's so crazy about it. It, like, part of it is, is the, the, is what he's built. Obviously, like, he's built a collection of such a diverse, you know, eclectic 
group of talented people. Um, but he just, he figures some shit out with just different things. He also, like, I think he, he watches so much fucking battle rap, man. It is so hard. I can't imagine watching as much battle rap as he fucking watches. I can barely keep up with my friends' battles and watch, like, <laughs> a couple of the people I like, um, you know? And that dude, all fucking day. So, like, of course he just sees shit that we don't see you know definitely yeah man and he's the guy's an evil genius in that sense like he's so good at like matching people up like for example when i when i heard that canal was coming to i battle in my head i thought he's canal's got to be battling mew lips like the uh. else makes sense and then it came <laughs> out that he was battling nonch and i wasn't too aware of nonch at this point but it was it was perfect. I love that battle. So he definitely knows what he's doing. Well, it's crazy. It's interesting how it works that you sort of get like these, you know, I think Nanch calls it, uh, t- you know, typifying trilogies. That there's so many battles on I battle where it's like you can almost find like little division conferences within i battle where it's like you have like nonch mulips homeschool dale you got like similar like similar but like all very completely fucking different um just completely different like you can see why why someone groups together dale denton and mulips but like there's nothing similar about the way they rap um you know and that's and that's what's that's what's interesting with with I battle too is that he's found he's found all these different pockets of types of rappers and you know different pockets of types different pockets of types of rappers that just are all fucking good and then you can make them battle each other and it's style clashes like there's so many ways to just make crazy style clashes with the roster that he built yeah definitely man and like there's there's still a couple of like members of the I battle roster as such that I think I'd really like to see you battle. Like I think, I think you and flag could be. incredible. Oh, so yeah. So I, that's funny you say that, man. So I, I, I never, I don't want to say anything about, you know, I keep, we're, we're not supposed to say anything about any battle ever until it's announced on a flyer or anything like that. But me versus flag has come up before and I sort of, so I did not, let me, let, yeah, let me talk my shit, I guess. So I never would have, I would never, I never thought flag, never. And flag and I write similarly, certain punches to the point where like, he's said things that I've said, I've said things that he's said, like, it's just been very similar at times. Like we, and not, we're still again, very different. And even when we've had lines that have been similar, they're very different, but I think certain wordplay, certain ways that he constructs bars, maybe certain types of things that he raps about, we have certain um, overlap definitely, but he's been like, he's been someone I've been friends with since like I debuted. He's been super supportive of me and he was, he was a lot more refined when I was debuting and I really didn't know like sort of how to write the way that battle rappers write, you know? Um, and I think like, I think now, I think for a long time, like I would never want to be battling flag. Cause I was like, oh, I don't want to slow flag down and, you know, um, and like whatever. So I would never, it just never even like occurred to me until Lex Lex suggested it at some point just as like a you know as a thought and I was like man that battle would I think at this point I think I've gotten to the point where I can beat him I do think I can beat him and I I don't think it was like that for most of my career um but I think he'd be hard to battle Sweeney's the same fucking way. Like, I think they'd be hard to battle. I think they'd be annoying to battle. I think I'd have to defend certain angles and shit, and I'd have to worry about, like, 
you know, I'm as a freestyle guy, there'd be so many things that I have to account for that they might take. But I don't think overall, I think I could beat Flag. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Louis versus Flag, I guess. Um, but I think I could beat. I think I could beat Flag. I think Flag's really good. I just think it is. It is what it is now. Like his style. He's a great writer. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Like that's that. That's it. It's like, just like, good writing. Um, I think like. I could be more entertaining, so. Okay. I'd battle. I'd battle flag. I. I. I guess I would battle flag. Um, but I have done. I have done. I've drove driven myself crazy over if I want to or not. That's but fair now enough. I think I am at a point where I could probably beat him. So yeah, I guess I would battle flag. But we'll see how flag versus Louis, uh, how that turns out first. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. But yeah, I mean, talk your shit, man. I like it. And I mean, to be honest, Sweeney was going to be one of the other suggestions as well. I think that would be great. And I think you... Yeah, Sweeney fucking called Sweeney called me out too and I was just like damn it I said I don't know if I said this in my opinion Sweeney is I don't know if I said this publicly anywhere I meant to he is the highest risk lowest reward battle ever like he's very good competitively he writes to the person he's battling um he writes to try and respond to what they're going to bring He's like an angle guy. He's someone who you underestimate when you're sizing up competition. Um, and I think he like sneakily wins battles that way. And it's just not as fun as fucking battling mulips. I'd rather battle mulips and it'd be fun. And I just win, you know, like, it's just like, you, you know, maybe you win, maybe you don't. Like Sweeney, I would feel, it's like a competitive battle and it's hard. And it's not as fun as Mulips or like Jables. Jables is going to say it funny and cool. Yeah. So. Okay. That's the way I look at, that's the way I look at Sweeney. And, and I mean, Lex was super pumped when Sweeney called me out because he had just beat Caustic and that is, it is very, yes, that is like very nice. Um, But I don't want to battle Sweeney and have to try really, really hard. (laughs) you know it's not what i want that's fair enough man i get that and the the final ones that come to mind for me is like either a a dago davalo or a lev corso i think would be amazing as well yeah that would be great dago dago is like the best writer ever i would if i would battle dago it would be just so i can see what he writes to me definitely yeah um that and that would be and if I think the reason I wouldn't battle Dago is because I, I'm, I would rather, it's more important to me at this point in Dago's career that I get Dago battles against the people who I want him to battle most, you know, like Dago has had a long career battling all of us. Um, and I want him now to like, I want him to battle Eve Farrell and then like Besaurus and a couple of vets, you know, um, I don't even want to slow him down. Like, I think, yeah, I think I wouldn't even want to slow him down. I think Sweeney, if you look at Sweeney, the Sweeney compared to Red Flag thing, it's like if you beat Red Flag and it's hard, you get a ton of credit and everyone's amazing. Sweeney's like underrated, so it's not worth it. And then Dago is like legend status, but I couldn't, I couldn't slow him down. And then Lev, I haven't even, I haven't watched too much Lev, man. I've only really watched like two or three Lev battles. Okay. I mean... For a for a flat earther, he he's very good. <laughs> Is he a flat earther? Yeah. But then maybe I will write for him. <laughs> Definitely, there's there's a lot to attack there. To be fair, but yeah, I, I like Lev a lot, man. And um, Saurus had some. I'm pretty sure it was Saurus anyway. He had some amazing yeah. flat earther lines for for. Oh right, I do remember that. Yes, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Yes. But like in terms of like your your experience at battle events now then, so obviously you've been to quite a few events, like what stands out for you as the best battle that you've seen live personally? 
Hmm. Best live battle. Hmm. Best live battle. Well, we talked Bang's Daylight. We talked about a lot of the best things I've seen live. We talked about Bang's Daylight was was definitely one of the craziest things I've ever seen live. Um, yeah, real deal, real deal versus uh, Chilla for the title in Boston was definitely one of the craziest things I've seen live. Um, I'm trying to think I battle. I'm trying to think what's some of the best. Some of the best I battle ones. Dunch, uh, anytime Dunch battles, anytime Dunch battles, it's pretty much my favorite um, <laughs> yeah. battle in the room. I can't even, at this point, it's hard to even tell. Like I feel, I literally feel when I'm in the room for like a, a Dunch battle, it feels the same as when I'm like at Bonnaroo or something and I'm waiting for the killers or, you know, Eminem or something to come out. Like, and, and, and Dunch is, is just Dunch and he's just like a normal, like any one of us in the league, but he's just, it's just such a fucking treat. Um, like, so I can't even tell sometimes, like I get like, he might be not prepared, but when, when he's fucking battling, I'm, I'm so excited that it's the most fun ever. Like that Mike P, Mike P versus Dunch, I was... I w Gluiz, that was the first time we postponed me and Gluizy. Um, I was on a little bit of ketamine and Mike P was throwing fucking pennies at the floor. You know, it was like the, the most, it was, I was like, uh, I was watching like two people like Mike P and Dunch are like, uh, they like, they're like the best rappers that fit my 2k profile basically you know if if like i made a character in 2k we'd all sort of look similar um so so like they're like the two best that sort of look like me and they're just battling like a block away from my house in like the we go hard basement um on i battle you know so that like shit like that was was really cool. The Saurus Marv being on fucking I battle like that, that was really fucking cool. Yeah, that's incredible. You know but what I was crazy? You know what was crazy in the room? And this is this is underrated. Again, I was I hate to relate how many of these um how many of these experiences are like my memory of them is dependent on the drug I was on at the time, but Flow Leads versus Dale Denton. As much as Flow Leads uh, is like no longer a member of I Battle and sucks, um, Flow Leads versus Dale Denton. Flow Leads was absolutely ridiculous, and that's a battle that on cam it's it actually looks closer. Like I could say like Dale and Flow, it looks like it could go either way, um, but in the room it looked like Flow Leads killed dale and it was one of the most electrifying performances if you've never seen that that's like an not too much older but that's like a couple of years ago i battle battle that is like really cool performance flow leads i don't want to i don't know why i'm plugging flow leads right now i really shouldn't be plugging flow leads that's not the goal i think it might be the only flow leads battle that i've ever seen i don't really know a lot about the guy if i'm honest but i have seen that battle and do you know do you know do you know the the him leaving I battle story? No, not at all. Oh, great. This is so nice that I could put this on a, on on the podcast so that it exists in the real world. There's just like a history <laughs> of this. So here's the here's the beautiful fucking story. So Flow Leads, man, um you know, he's like a sensitive guy. He's like a battle rapper and he's whatever recovering drug addict um whatever he's like good lex gives him a whole bunch of looks lex has him battle bangs lex gets him lot a ton of like good battles whatever jeff an older i battle guy you know old school i battle guy um doesn't like flow leads because i guess flow leads talked some shit about jeff so jeff goes on facebook live in the i battle group to review a flow leads video and he just 
absolutely destroys flow leads like it's just calls him a bitch the whole time it's really funny we could probably pull it up and find it but he just goes line by line um just like you know quoting how much flow lead sucks or whatever but a bunch of people in the group like it um and people are like laughing at it and you know whatever as a battle rapper like i see this and i think like this is great for flow leads like jeff who is someone who is an old school i battle guy who's on king of the dot main stage who's getting pgs who's battled you know goods and gotten uh, 200,000 views is making fun of you in your league's group that's good for you like get a battle with jeff out of this like why are you not responding like a battle rapper what he did was he um he got mad that people didn't defend him which like jeff uh flow leads you know like he was he's my friend at the time he's not my close friend or anything but like whatever why would the league didn't think a battle rapper needed anyone to defend himself like why why in the world so he left i battle um completely like he had to make sure he formally left i battle i was actually supposed to battle him so i had started writing for him and he left i battle and made an announcement like coliseum is now my home league i'm gonna leave i battle so jeff pretty much bitched him out of i battle um which is which i guess at the end of the day is fine like if if you're capable of getting bitched out of your own league like maybe you shouldn't be in a battle rap league that's really good maybe you just shouldn't battle at all like i don't yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know it is definitely not a place to be sensitive i would imagine i mean it it always leaves me like gobsmacked whenever battlers get kind of like the amount of uk battlers that they'll they'll mo like they go crazy if they see someone give a decision against them and stuff it's like you're part of a subjective culture like (laughs) the whole point of battle rap is for people to think like pick who they thought was better like and i I mean like the and the the way i look at it and the way i took it personally was i look at it and i'm like okay so jeff made fun of you so what did you do you left a league that as much as jeff was a part of that league it's not jeff's league it's lex's league it's paul mars's league it's everyone else at ibattles league so all of the money that's been invested into your opponents over and over again all of those looks that you were given instead of someone else like those were investments in you that you're going to just walk away from because you got fucking bullied. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. That's, that's probably one of the weirdest things I've ever heard about, but you know, it's actually in battle rap on the scale of like weird. It's like a four, you know, that's, (laughs) that's, Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it does attract some very special people, to be fair. But yeah, I mean, just like leave it, leaving a league. Like he's he battled on I Battle quite a lot as well. Like he's got a lot oh, yeah. of footage there. And dude, yeah, he used to be. You know, he used to be. He used to post all the family stuff. You know, this is like my home. And then you can just do that because people didn't defend you what does that even mean yeah that's that's strange behavior man but i mean good riddance in that sense i suppose if he's if he's gonna leave a league due to a couple of comments and i I just hate i just hate like don't slow this shit down you know so many people are working hard hustling grinding putting in fucking time for this shit don't slow anything down don't slow shit down fair enough no i agree man and yeah good riddance i'd say but yeah exactly yeah and uh, like how how far in for like prepping for flow leads were you then barely barely like maybe maybe two weeks in and we still had you know way plenty of time to go 
I don't even know. I don't even think Lex put out the flyer yet. Okay. You know, and I mean, and I think the thing that just, which, which is, which is, he definitely, I'll say this. If he would have canceled the battle, it would have been plenty of time. You know, that wouldn't have been a problem. I would have been like, okay, we're, you know, whatever. It was two weeks. You, you know, you're not taking a battle now because you, you know, you can't handle it or something. And you, you didn't realize that or something came up, whatever. That's fine. That's not what happened. I started writing and then you left the league because Jeff yelled at you. <laughs> you know, like, I think that's what like kills me about it. Like I've definitely been put in worse positions you know, like the, I've definitely been no showed a couple of days before. I've been no show day of. Me versus Q Morgan was a no show day of. That was clutch time, got arrested. Right. And, and Q Morgan's opponent no showed too. So we just battled. <laughs> you know, so he didn't, Flo didn't kill me with that. But honestly, my, my beef is all just more of this bigger picture of like, don't leave the fucking league, guy. Yeah. The league invested in you. Definitely. Give, him, give me my fucking investment back. Yeah, what a fucking weirdo. But yeah, I mean, apart from like that though, man, the, the last battle rap related question in that sense is it is kind of the one that people have found the most difficult to answer as a whole. But if you were a promoter and you were you were putting on a battle event that you had kind of unlimited funds to put together. What battles do you really want to see? And what would you put on the event? Mm. Yeah, I will not have a hard time with this. Hold on. Give me 10 seconds. Let me think. Nice. All right. All right. Here's what I got. I'm saying. So I'm going Fresco versus Rum Nitty. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, it. Iron Iron Solomon versus Thesaurus. It's okay. it's due, it, we're due for that rematch. Lex Luthor versus Sirius Jones. Tripper versus A Ward. Mike P versus Eddie I. And then Excel versus Cortez. Those are just off the top of the head, real quick, what I would definitely do. Those would have to happen. That's an incredible card, to be fair. I love it. And the the only one personally for me that like I, I just can't get on board with Sirius Jones anymore. Like he's Oh I well that's like that's why I picked Lex to battle him. Um it is me picking Sirius Jones Lex to battle Sirius Jones has nothing to do with me thinking Sirius Jones is a good battle rapper right now or a treat to watch. Um I just I just want Lex to whoop on a bunch of old legends. Um like I've I've always wanted Lex to battle Iron and he does not want to because iron you know iron is fucking crazy um but like Sirius is someone who just to watch lex is and lex's style of just clowning um i would just want to see lex fucking clown on Sirius jones i think that would be uh like that would make my fucking life if i got to see that so nice yeah i like it man and like i think lex would destroy him and Sirius Jones recently came over to the UK, battled Tony D on the... Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, man, like, it is... At the end of the battle, it's one of the most awkward things that I've <laughs> ever seen at an event, because, like, he just choked all three rounds, and then the battle ends, and he turns to everybody, like, he turns to the crowd, and he's like, I'm really sorry, I've never choked before and stuff like that <laughs> and like i kind of had a bit more respect for him at this point and then he goes i need to get my material off so i'm gonna read it to you off my phone he cannabis yeah and i'm like wow i'm like, no, the like what are you doing and like he starts reading this material off his phone and like 
He's that he, was that was at the uh, the the event uh, with the real sick versus Maverick event. Yeah, same one. The Shadi Har versus John John is that? What yeah. It was? It was, yeah, that's it. And and that and he pulled out a fucking phone. Yeah, and like him how much, versus how much did him pulling out a phone cost? A lot. Like, I th- I think he was the most expensive person on the card. This is this is what this is the problem with battle rap. Yeah. Like that that sums up everything that's wrong with battle rap is he's doing that and getting paid that much money when can you imagine the card you could throw with just his paycheck for that battle? Like you could know, you could just take that and and get a bunch of flights for a bunch of people and you could have the craziest card ever or you could do Tony D versus Sirius Jones and have Sirius Jones pull out his fucking phone and read off it. I mean, I'm not 100% sure that he was the most expensive. John John could have. Yeah. I mean, either fucking way. Either way, he got it's, paid. Ridic- it's ridiculous that. that they're getting paid. Yeah, and that they're getting paid good money when there's so many talented people who should get paid. I just think that it's the problem is if – so, yes, there's oversaturation. So if there's oversaturation – then the differentiator should be like how professional and clean your performances are, you know, like that's the only thing like, yes, Sirius Jones, you've been here for a long time, but, and I don't want to, he's just, I don't want to keep coming at Sirius Jones. I'm like attacking people. Any, anyone, any, any of these old guys who have been around forever, you know, who were trailblazers and pioneers, they were trailblazers and pioneers. And they deserve all the credit in the world for styles that they created and types of punchlines that they came up with and all of that stuff. But if you're looking at just who is producing the best art at this point, it's obviously not consistently always the people who were the pioneers. Um, and they're still the people who are getting paid those huge fucking checks. And I just think if you're getting paid that much you better be fucking clean the least you could do is be clean and i don't want to say too i I do want to say there's a million things like i'm not always clean i'm never always clean there's a million things that fuck people up and people choke not just because they're not prepared you know um like there's a million things that go wrong like there's a million reasons that you are can have an off night and aren't getting your shit off so i don't want to say that either that's another thing like i don't want to say that you know everyone's not perfect but I just think to people who are at those, I think that's, I think the problem is people are comfy. The problem is that a majority of the seats in battle rap are not up for grabs and we're not, the, the, the audience base isn't expanding exponentially as battlers are expanding. If anything, the, there's probably more, the, the rate that battlers are increasing is probably like, it's probably like one to two with battle rap fans and battlers, which is crazy. There's nothing else like that. Like there's not like boxing, like one out of two boxing fans also box, you know? Um, so there's just so many fucking battle rappers. It's like, yeah, you need to be, you need to be perfect. Definitely. Yeah, man. And like, just uh, like with Sirius Jones, like at the point where he said, I'm going to read the bars off my phone, like the room's full at this point because th- this is the last battle of the event as well. So like it's just before everyone had to get out of the venue and there's, there's probably about 15 to 20 people around him on the stage and he starts reading off his phone, and the only thing he's concentrating on is his phone. He didn't look up the whole time. And, like, by the time he'd finished, everyone had shifted off the stage, and the room went from being about, I'd say, about 250 people to literally about five people just stood there watching him. And he kind of looked up, realized that everyone had got like looked around him and it is it's one of the most depressing things i've ever seen and he oh my god the thing with that venue is is like you you walk in and you've got the bar area and then you go through these arches into like the stage area so he had to come off stage 
and walk through the crowded bar area to get back to like the green room and stuff. And he just yeah he puts his hood up, puts his oh, sunglasses yeah. back on, and he just walks with his head down through a crowd full of people Jesus. without saying a word. And it was it was just the the weirdest thing that I've ever seen at an, at an event. That is sad, man. It was awkward. So... Like I, I felt sorry for him to be honest, but at the same time, I kind of didn't. Like at the end of the day. Battle rap events for me personally, like that event probably cost me all in all, I'd say about a hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars for a day out kind of thing. So yeah. when you're paying that money to see Sirius right. Jones choke yep. three rounds, it's it's pretty deflating. Yeah. But apart from that, I mean, amazing event and real sick versus Maverick was incredible and so was shotty john john and yeah yeah great was, did uh i think oops battled on that card did that happen was there an oops battle oops did battle yeah he battled villain and villain choked all three rounds as well so that was pretty underwhelming but oops had some really good stuff he said like so are you, are you aware of villain no so villain is he's he's albino and okay oops i think his first round he said i've I've wrapped a whole round without mentioning that you're an albino um and he said he said something like that something like i'm not gonna bring up your pigment you're albino, I'm a black man from America, we've both got a skin condition. Uh, I thought it was fucking amazing at the time, but yeah, the, the, the battle's not, I've not re-watched it since it's been released just because Villain does choke like all three rounds. Yeah. So it was a bit, a bit poor to watch in the room. I, I think that was... If I remember rightly, that was the second battle of the day as well after, like, the Academy final. So the Academy is, like, right. a tryout tournament kind of thing. Well, like, yeah, that's that's the, the thing with Oops. So, like, Oops has been around for for super long time. Um, and he's, you know, like, he's, he's, he's solid and all. But I feel like you can never, like, he's always either at the top of – you know the gz or the bottom of the main thing because it's like he's bruce franks jr so how can you not like at least have him there no matter what um <laughs> you know just by virtue of of being him <laughs> yeah and i mean in recent years i feel like he's got a lot better like i think the b dot battle was absolutely incredible but um oops versus excel is is real is real crazy yeah yeah it is yeah, he's, Excel he's, is amazing. Excel is an incredible, incredible talent. He's just fucking so like so clean concepts. Like the writing is so clean, delivery is so clean. He's really a really good writer. So a few years ago, he was like the person that I wanted to see come to the UK the most in terms of like <coughs> international battlers. I was a huge fan and like he got booked over here. So he was meant to battle. Um, I think he was meant to battle a guy called Rivers who was like the premier battles champ and stuff. He's like it, it, one of the, the big names over here in the last few years. Um, and when I saw the announcement. Oh, I, Rivers, Rivers. Uh, I just watched something on Premiere versus chris something chris lease yeah 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 that yeah, was the it. the title match so where he won the title but um he basically won the title and then left the league because huh. I, I don't really know what happened he was meant to battle one of the league owners and he he wasn't happy that one of the league owners was like showing his material to people before the battle or something like that. It was 
it's a situation I'm not really sure what happened, but he just vacated the title and left kind of thing. But he was meant to battle XL at an, a London event probably about two years ago now. And as soon as I saw that it was announced, I booked my tickets because I'd wanted to see XL over here for about a year or so by this point. And XL, it's like, I think about a week after I booked my tickets, XL pulled out of the battle because he'd accepted a battle with Chilla Jones instead. And I was just mm. fuming at that point. Like, I was so pissed off that... I've not, I've, I've not really yeah. been as much of a fan of him since. Because, like, for me, I, I understand Chilla Jones is obviously a huge opportunity, but don't you can't go back sure. on your word when you've already booked something. In my opinion, like it's just, it's just unprofessional. Sure, we've, yeah. I mean, my, like, it that sucks. My, I only know XL from from I Battle, where he's just like the biggest fucking team player in the world. Um, you know, I, I think like to have, like we have Excel, Excel prides himself on saying I battle is my home league. And, you know, like I want to be a part of the roster and he's just battled so many of our like up and comers at this point. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a rite of passage at this point on I battle that you battle Excel and he's, and 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 for him to continue to do that and continue to have a presence on iBattle and always be, you know, taking these battles for us and then still be going out on the road and doing the crazy shit that he does, he's, you know, he's he's one of my favorites. He's he's definitely definitely been one of my favorites for some time. Excel versus Madflex is fucking unreal. That battle is crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, I I I always have been a big fan of Excel, but whole situation just left a bit of a sour taste like sure. I think off that event I think they booked three internationals so I think they booked XL Big Cannon and Real Deal and again Real Deal was the only one to turn up so it was yeah so you guys seem to have pretty bad luck with uh, international bookings huh yeah we do. It's um, it's been frustrating at points, to be honest. But then again, we we've had bad luck with UK battlers. A lot of UK battlers yeah. no show events. So, but I remember when Mike P came over here. I was really excited for that, and he was meant to battle a guy called Koji, who was battler of the year over here that that year and the battle it was in manchester and koji lives in manchester and he just didn't turn up to the event and it was at that point like his biggest battle of his career by a long way as well yeah so it's it's, it's ridiculous and like my opinion is is if, if people do if people no show a battle regardless of how good they are they start from the bottom again and they they go to battling right. tryouts like and if they refuse to do that then good riddance like why are we continuing to book these people but unfortunately he didn't he didn't even reach out to anybody from the league for months afterwards he just went MIA and then he reached out made up with them and was instantly like headlining cards again which for me is just i think it's absolutely ridiculous but yeah yeah, man, I told you we got to do that thing where we just, where I just buy fans pay per views who beat up battlers, who, yeah. who no show it. and steal deposits. JC's first on the list. <laughs> fuck JC. I hate that fucking guy. Yeah, fuck um, JC. That's what I say every time I drive by a church. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bar, man. I like it, but. <laughs> No, I mean, oh. apart from that, though, man, that's that's everything kind of battle rap related done now. But, like, w I've been finishing up with a couple of, like, music-related questions and then just three sure. random questions to, to end on. But 
it's a difficult one, but if you had to pick your top three like favorite albums of all time off the top of your head, what would you go with? Um, hmm, let me think. Um, albums, I would say probably, so probably 36 Chambers, um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Okay, it's a good list, man, and 36 Chambers makes my list too, and then my beautiful dark twisted fantasy comes up a lot like almost every other episode and for me it's not even my favorite kanye album i don't think so i go i've gone back and forth on if it on if it is um my favorite kanye album i i have i like i it could be it could be three um it could you know it could be three kanye albums that are are my favorite probably but i think for I think there is a reason that it comes up so often, you know, on your show. Like I do think that it is just technically one of the most amazing, layered, brilliant albums ever. Yeah, I I can see it for for me personally. Like in terms of just what I I prefer to listen to. That I, if if we're talking Kanye albums, it's hard to I'd like argue against Graduation for me. Interesting. Interesting. I like graduation. I think I like, so college dropout is probably the one that has the songs I could just like bang the most. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, have you ever, uh, have you ever listened to um, the dissected podcast? No, don't think I have. So, so it's, it's a really good show. Um, it's called, yeah, dissect. And each, each season they take an album um, and they just dissect the album and they dissect like each song on it and the overall like narrative um, of it. And one of the seasons they do is my, you know, is, is that album. And they, they do, they do uh, not, they do to pimp a butterfly is one season. Um, I can't remember what the other ones are, maybe a Frank ocean album or something, but it's really good. And you really hear the thing with that album is there's so much there's so much in different choices he makes in terms of like certain samples um and like certain certain inspirations like certain like just it builds to such a bigger picture when you step back and like view it as a whole album definitely check out that podcast man that shit will knock your socks off i'm telling you it is either either season the kendrick season or the kanye season um, it'll it'll change the way you look at either album, definitely. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check that out. Have they have they done a season on Tyler the Creator? I think they might have. I think they might have. That, I think that I sounds, have listened now. Actually, that sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure they. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Season four. Okay, I've listened to that so. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm aware of them in that sense, but the yeah, Kendrick I think and se- Kanye ones, I'm gonna. I think watch. season season two is yeah is uh is Kanye, I think. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go, man. But yeah, and like, what were what, what, the... what were the other two you had? You had uh, you had um, thirty six chambers. Yeah, for me it'd be thirty six chambers. Um, there's, I don't know how familiar you are with grime music, but like. Grime for me is, and I don't really listen to it anymore. I don't like the modern stuff, but like just because of how much I lo- like obsessed over it as a teenager. There's yeah. an album by, a, a, there's a, a rapper called Wiley. Um, he did an album called, well, it was, it's more of a mixtape, I guess, but it's called Tunnel Vision Volume One. He did like, eight different volumes of it and it's it's like a bit of a masterpiece for me but i'd have to say that and then 
My third one, I'd probably, I don't know, it's hard, man. I think I'd have to say, I'd have to go with a Gangstar album, I think. That's a good, yeah, that's a good choice. Um, just because I like, as a kid, Guru was one of the the first oh, yeah. rappers that I was like, I thought was amazing and like completely different to anything I'd heard. So, I'd probably say Hard to Earn by by Gangstar. That's a good yeah. That's a good pick. I feel like uh, I had. Capital Punishment, big pun, was like right on the border. I could, I could slip that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. That was like foundational when I was a kid. Illmatic was obviously foundational. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. And big pun, Capital Punishment. Yeah, that's that's close for me as well. Like, I remember, like, in the UK, hip hop's never been too accessible in that sense. Like, it was it was quite hard to find when I was younger, but I kind of got into it the same way most British people do. And like, just from hearing Eminem, but hearing, hearing big pun. Um, oh my God. What's the track called? You ain't a killer. Yeah. Was just one of the standout moments for me. Like it, it's the technicality of his writing was just absolutely incredible. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yo, so I have a question, dude. Okay. Um, so Don't Flop has kind of been whatever, and Premiere is kind of whatever. What's the rest of, like, the, the landscape over there? I don't really so, – because here's the thing. I've watched, I've watched stuff, um, and I've watched certain battlers – and I've watched certain battles on certain platforms. I don't have uh, sort of like a, a, a strong education outside of, say, don't flop in terms of international stuff. I know that leagues exist. I know King of the Ronalds is a, is a league, right? Is that something? It, so King of the Ronalds was a league. They're, they're no longer throwing events. Um, however, the... So King of the Ronalds did their last event in the summer, just gone. However, they are now they are now going to be no coast UK division. Oh uh, no way! <laughs> yeah, so that's something that's in the pipeline to start this year. I think their their first event was supposed to be in September, but we'll have to see if that can go ahead or not. But yeah, so that's. King of the Ronalds isn't a thing anymore, but the the same guys that ran King of the Ronalds right. are going to be doing the No Coast division. So we've got that. Um, so essentially, it for for years and years it was just don't flop. Really, there was a couple of other small leagues that were were based up north and stuff, but they never really. It, it was kind of like a thousand views per battle max whilst don't flop were kind of getting like 50 K on tryouts at one point. Yeah. Um, the only big leagues really that have popped up over the years is like King of the Ronalds came about six years ago now, maybe. And for a long time, it was just don't flop and King of the Ronalds is like a left field league in that sense. But then, don't flop had a bit of a a weird downfall as such. Yeah. Like, yeah, are you aware of all that? Yeah. Yeah. So after that was when we had a ton of leagues pop up. Um, we had so Premier Battles came up, which originally was like a team based league. That's like, what. Yeah, I thought they were doing that. Right. This like uh, they were going to make it like clubs or whatever yeah which for the first year was really successful but it's kind of like it it from what i gather it made it difficult to carry on creating matchups 
So they've kind of led to scrapping the team idea now. Um, Because it it was kind of five teams with five battlers in each. And one, it was getting to a point where they kind of all battled each other. So Premier Battles are kind of the front runner on that front now. But we had a league pop up called Chalked Out, which was... Right, I remember that. Yeah, they they were they were doing stuff with KOTD, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, so they Eddie, became Eddie battling Canada over there. UK, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, so they're now no longer a thing. Um, they've basically become they've kind of stepped away from battle rap and become something called Ultimate Insult Championships, which is like. <laughs> It's stand-up comedians just insulting each other, but not rhyming, if that makes sense. Right. Um, Roast battles is what they were saying. Yeah. Calling, yeah. yeah, pretty sure much. Um, and then we had a league called Code Red, but Code Red, so that's where XL was booked. Um, basically, Code Red was... Their big yearly events were called Next in Line events, and which again was what XL was booked on. But the first ever Next in Line was on Don't Flop, and then when the fallout happened, a lot of the staff from Don't Flop created Code Red, and now the staff yeah. that did create Code Red have kind of joined forces with Don't Flop again. So it's it's been a really confusing few years. To be <laughs> and then, and then that that card, uh, that card in Ireland was rap is full. Yes, so rap is full is like the main league in Ireland. There's what well, it's pretty much the only league as such. There's another. They have something called Rappers Comp Ireland, which do the occasional event, but they're not really a league. But. Rap is full is like the Irish league that yeah is bringing all the talent through and yeah that card was crazy that was an insane event it was so rap is full had an investor um so the broken resolutions events essentially are the the staff members of rap is full I don't think have too much to do with the events it's there's an investor called Matt who puts the whole event together out of his own pocket. Um, he just decided instead of starting his own league, he wanted to help yeah. build Rap is Full instead. So yeah. they they That's they do some sense. amazing events anyway, but they 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 run on a, a low budget generally speaking, whereas those cards are are all funded yeah. by Matt. So. It's um, yeah. the The Irish scene is is really healthy at the moment, and the UK scene is getting better again. Um, both don't flop. Don't flop are now doing a lot of events again, and don't flop and Premier Battles are both trying to bring a lot of talent through. Um, to my my tryout for Premier Battle should actually come out on Sunday. And the, it's basically like a tournament for 16 either newcomers or kind of less experienced guys to, <laughs> to get a look. Um, but yeah, as, as a whole, man, it's I, there's always a lot of strange politics involved in UK battle rap, unfortunately, and there's the the kind of figureheads as it were are, 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 they fall out pretty regularly so it's it's a difficult scene to follow at times yeah for sure i understand that but i mean like premier battles i think will will become something very big um and something that i mentioned on an episode with Bison Briggs, so it's it's Bison Briggs and Shotty Horror that own Premier Battles. Um, 
I mentioned to him that I really wanted to see like an I battle versus UK card. And yeah. It, it didn't. That'd be great. He didn't state that it was happening, but from what I gather <laughs> from what he said, it, it's definitely something that they have in the pipeline. Oh, that'd be great. So, yeah. I, I mean, there's so many great matchups to pick from as well. I think, I think you commented on this post a couple of days back, actually, but someone put a post in the iBattle forum asking to put two, like, I battle dream cards together and my comment was like a UK versus I oh, battle yeah. event that it came to me in about 10 seconds like it, it just, <laughs> every matchup works really well and I think the UK leagues have kind of noticed that instead of doing what don't flop used to do at a time because like Back in the day, I got sick to death of going to events and seeing Charlie Clips and DNA battle three times a night. Like, right. we don't book them anymore. Like, it's leagues are noticing that, you know, if we look at the I battle roster, like, we've booked Red Flag now, we've booked Real Sick. They've both come over and given two phenomenal performances. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And that's, and that's what I was going to say. It's you're, you're just going to get, quality you're gonna get people who are gonna come out i mean look at look at dunch's performance first podge yeah amazing that second round is one of the funniest rounds ever it's so it's it's amazing i i i talked to him about it yesterday i hit him up because i'm like the thing that was that i love the most there's like he did that i said he did that whole fucking like showtime thing and it's like he didn't even have to rap and it's the best part like that's just how fucking good he is it's like he goes in and out of like it's just he's doing he he's doing something bigger than just like rapping you know it's like he he thinks about it in a way where it's like he just fucking destroys you and he just like takes a concept and just fucking kills you man that that second round is is definitely up there, but I really like any anyone Dunch has stood in front of, man. Everything he does is fucking crazy. Although man, red flag red flag probably beat Dunch, which is is nuts. That was that was one of the coolest battles to see live, red flag versus Dunch. Yeah. Um that was nuts. Flag Amazing, has haymakers yeah. there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of both of them, to be honest. So, it, it, unfortunately, I had to cancel going to that Ireland event really last minute too, so I, I didn't get to see them see them live. And I'm, I'm pretty guys about it, to be honest. Yeah. But, yeah, they both killed it and Saurus killed it as well. And it was, yeah, great event, man. But on the... On the on the UK front, like if you if you're looking to check out UK battlers, like the list I put together on that I battle front is probably kind of the main guys over here now. From what I I can't remember who I put on it off the top of my head now, but there's if you watch the battlers that are suggested and see the battles that I put them in they kind of all make sense immediately if you see what i mean like i think i put you against rivers if i remember rightly and I, yeah i know rivers i definitely know rivers who who, who else uh, did you put i'm trying to trying to think i i did a bunch of um i've watched a bunch of stuff recently like in these last 2 weeks so i've just started to kind of learn some of these guys Okay. I I mean I've followed a lot of like I followed sort of you know I know tons of older like sort of the classical UK battle rap stuff sure but I think now I've started to look at more of like um just any of the newer stuff that's dropped so any of those any of the guys pretty much any of the guys who are battling on premiere just anywhere else they might have battled too I've probably looked at through stuff you know okay so I think the card that I, I went with was 
You versus Rivers, Red Flag versus Soul. Um, I love Soul, man. He's so good. Yeah, Soul is Soul's kind of Soul's incredible. Soul's so good. Soul's the think, guy over here, really. Like, shot, he doesn't battle very often at all. So, I so. think I, I also think Soul's just better than Shoddy. I mean, they're both obviously legends and great, but Soul's unreal. Soul does some crazy shit. As just a writer, like, that's I'm big on when I hear bars I like, I just fixate on them to try and understand what I like about them to be able to do shit like that. And he's just he's such a good fucking writer. Definitely. Yeah, he's he's incredible, man. And like I just think him versus Flag would be insane. I think they they both write fairly similar similarly, so I just think that'd be amazing. Um I'd I put Louis Valentine up against a guy called L S Dean. I know I know L S Dean. I, I uh I like his stuff. I like L S Dean. Yeah, he's he's sick. Um what else did I put on that man? Um, I put, I think I put Jack Casserole against Nugget. I like um, Nugget a lot. I think Nugget's really good. Nugget's incredible, man. Like he's I think Nugget's real good. He's the best battler from Ireland by a long way. Um, so yeah, I think we'd we'd have to have him on. I can't. I, I'm kind of bad at being able to differentiate which of you fuckers are from where. So I, I'm trying to remember who are like the, the, the Irish ones. I'm so nugget nuggets, Irish uh, is terminal. Is he Irish? Yeah, he is. Ter, terminals, Irish. Um, Podge is Irish, obviously. Right. Yeah. Who else is Irish? Um, visual. Okay. And then LS Dean is, is UK, right? Yes. Yeah. He's from the UK. What about Matter? He's from UK? Matter's Matter. from the UK, yeah. Um, what what about uh, that, that, jo- that Johnny Darko guy? He's from Ireland. Ireland? Yeah. Um, so basically, on, on the card that I put together, you got Red Flag Soul, Souls from Scotland. Um, Louis L. S. Dean, who's from England, I said. Um, ah, no. So I said Jack Casserole versus Frankie Fraser. He's from ah, England. Fraser, Frankie Fraser is the man. Frankie Fraser is one of my favorite fucking international. Definitely. Yeah. Frankie Fraser is fucking dope. I've wanted him to come to I Battle for a while. That is. Like Jack Casserole said the same thing, man, and it's amazing to hear because for me, like Frankie's one of my favorites, and like I feel like he gets slept on in the UK. Oh my god, he could over there. He is really he could punch his ass off, man. He's really good. Yeah. What did he? Uh, he um. He's I he I've seen a bunch of his shit. Uh, the Bender battle, obviously shocks, right? Yeah. He I think he, Rivers. Um, I didn't watch. Um, I didn't watch the new. I didn't watch him versus G Show. I know he just battled G Show on on Ground Zero. Yeah, it's really good. Really good from both of them, actually. Um, yeah, Frankie's incredible, man. I'd love to see him on I Battle at some point, but um, I had. Yeah, who who did you have? You had Frankie versus who? Uh, Jack Casserole. Oh, versus Jack, and then who was Nugget versus? Nugget, I put against Dago. That's good. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that would be really good. So, you versus Rivers, Rivers from London. Um, I put Real Sick versus Unanimous. Um, that, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Obviously, Unan's from England. Um, Shah G versus a guy called Hulk. Um, Hulk's from England as well. If you, I think I watched. I watched one or two of Hulk's battles. Yeah, he battled Crow right. in the UK. I, I, yeah, I saw. I saw that. I didn't watch it, but I did see that. 
Yeah, that's. I, I can't remember. I, I watched something on Premiere, maybe from him. Did he just battle on Premiere recently? Yeah, he's battled Roby from Ireland, um, Mata. I think that might be it. I can't remember any others. Um, who else is that? I had, oh, home school versus a guy called Lazy Ass Jack. And so Lazy Ass Jack is like, he sounds like what I imagine most most American people think that British people sound like. Like his accent is kind of like the British people on Family Guy. Like he's <laughs> proper, well spoken, like quite posh. Yeah. But him versus LS Dean is incredible. And I think the 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 battle that gets kind of suggested for lazy the most is ellipsis and i just mm-hmm. feel that him and homeschool makes a bit more sense to me but uh, oh they are the they are the same thing i think it's, it's funny that homeschool ended up battling ellipsis and i said in the homeschool battle that i said i think i was the bar was like it was like uh y'all know how marv one has a retarded brother well clearly so does ellipsis and yeah. Ended up on it. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I put Mew Lips against Canal. I that like feels like it happened already somehow. Yeah. And it like that's that's how much that battle makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Nonch versus O'Shea would be the <laughs> the battle that I'd start the event with. <laughs> that's really good. Um, Dunch versus Matter. That's pretty good. Yeah, Matter. I I, I would I, I like Matter. I would I'd like to battle him. I would I would battle Matter. He's, yeah, he's cool. Matter's yeah. amazing, man. Like he he did a battle in the city that I live in last summer as well. Where like the the reason I like Matter so much is. He always comes with really original and like unpredictable angles. So he battled a female battler for the first time. And every battle she'd done was like the same thing. It was like some guy calling her ugly or calling her a slag or whatever. And then Matter battles her and takes this angle in his second round where he basically says that out of him and her, he's the bigger feminist. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it, it was really. That's fun to that's watch. fucking awesome. Yeah, that's a that's that's like, that's the kind of writing battle rap needs, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, I put King Jables against Shocks the Rebel. That's really good. I would love to see that. I put Sweeney against a guy called Wizard. Have you seen Wizard? No, I don't know who that is. Wizard. If you watch Wizard, it sounds familiar. Who has he? Who has he battled? He did a lot of two on twos. Um, so, he, him and a, a guy called Scissors. Um, they've battled like DNA and Cortez. Oh, and and Shuff, Shuffle T and Marlo. Yes. Yeah. But Wizard also he him versus Ogmios in like a, a solo battle is. It's one of my favorite battles ever. Like, wizard style is just, it's gum bars, but making them hilarious. So, like. Oh, I, I got to check it out. Yeah, that's, I'm all about that. That's I'm trying dope. to think of some of his stuff off the top of my head. He says, like, he's got this this one bar. It's not really a gum bar, I suppose, but he's he's got a bar against Ogmios where he's, um, so over in, in like in London and stuff, like London slang, people say bear a lot. Like they say like it's bear funny. Like if they think it's really funny, yeah. if that makes sense. So he's, he has this, this line where he's like, your chick loves to suck me off. She gives me bare head against the wall, like a hunter's lodge. And the room just, <laughs> um, He's got, he says, like, oh, 
What's the bar? Um, the he's like the papa. He's he's talking about like how the 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 paparazzi are always like trying to take pictures of him and stuff. And he says like camera, some like cameras fly around the kid like an Oxfam ad, which <laughs> I thought was amazing. But yeah, he's just he's. <laughs> He's like a massive fan favourite over here, and I think him versus Sweeney could be hilarious. I'm um, going to check him out tonight. I think I put Benji Reckless against Bobby Rex. It's good. Dale Denton versus Most Prob. <laughs> That's a really good one. Um, Most, Prob, uh, Most Prob came out to eye battle too. He did, yeah. It wasn't the... Wasn't the best for him though, was it? Like I know. No, he got he, was... uh, he got he got Smile Dini. He got the legend. Yeah, yeah. No, he he was meant to battle Captain Live though, and he no showed. So. Yep, yep. So so we had the, so he lucked out and he got Smile Dini. Yeah. We call that an upgrade. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and the last one. So this guy isn't from the UK, but. He's kind of become an honorary Brit through the years. Um, and I said conflicts versus Zane as right. Uh, so Zane is my favorite battle rapper. He's actually one for one, one for one. Your, your father's been dead for years. He's just literally my fucking favorite. The guy's the best. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's he can be very hit and miss, but when he's on it, he's one of the so funniest this is, people. This ever. is this is what I this is how I feel. Zane highlights, like edited to show the best parts of everything, is my favorite thing in the world. You know, like it, like a whole battle and sitting through it, and then everything, and then like consistency and all that is whatever. But like, just the like highlights and just random cuts of things that he said and like his quotes and the lines and things he does in battles he's my fucking favorite yeah no I, i'm with you i love zane as well and he's 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 hilarious i just i, I had to put I, him on the cards too i wanted to i wanted lex to I, i've wanted lex to book him forever but i think uh apparently he's like it's like uh, impossible like it's he can't do it or whatever yeah so. I had um, I had laugh and stalk on the show a couple, uh, about a week ago, and um, I said I'd love to see laugh and stalk battle Zane. Um, oh, that would be great! And laugh and stalk was like, yeah, I mean, my 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 dad's been alive for years, so I don't know what he'd say to me, and I just cracked up. I thought it was amazing, but yeah, I'd love to see that battle happen. But yeah, I think that was the card that I, I suggested anyway. So. So, um, but there, there's plenty of other options as well, man. Like there's, I battles got like Eddie I is, isn't even on that card, which right exactly has to be. And like, who else is there? Like, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head. Like Smile Dini. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see. You had a lot there. You had a lot of my. You had a lot of at least the the ones that are like. Top eye battle guys that are most active right now. Yeah. You know. Um yeah, you had Shaw, right? You had Casserole, you had Benji, you had homeschool. That's you had yeah, that's pretty much maybe like a leakness. Maybe a leakness battle. You had Eddie, you had Jables. You had someone from Ulips. You had someone for Dago. I didn't have Lev on there. Um, I didn't you need, have Black Adenic. You need a Jack Tripper. You need a Tripper battle. Very true. I'd put. I think I'd put Jack Tripper against. Um, I'd. I, I would have said villain, but like villain's last few battles have been pretty poor. Um the thing is like I I could I could 
I could enjoy like a uh, like Raptor versus versus Jack, but I I like when Jack I want Jack to battle someone. We haven't seen Jack battle someone like homeschool type. You know, like that's the I would want if I if he came if he went overseas I'd want him to battle like a more like quirky weird personality. Something yeah. not like him, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so. We'll go with Jack Tripper versus Calcium Kid. <laughs> That's a, yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Anytime seeing Calcium Kid battles is uh, is a plus for me. But yeah, I mean, is there is there any UK guys that that kind of stand out for you that you're a fan of? I think we said. We said, we, said soul most, we said most of them. Yeah, yeah, I love um yeah, I mean Soul Soul definitely is huge and, and Frankie Frazier definitely mm. are like t- two of the um two of the biggest ones that stand out, but a lot of the people we were talking about. Um and then obviously like Shuffle T and Marlo and you know, O'Shea and like things like some of the big guys. Yeah. So as far as I know, Shuffle T and Marlow will only do one more battle, and I think it's the the Saurus versus Ilmac battle. So that's that's a good idea. I kind of <laughs> left them off that card, but like Shuffles, I don't know if you've seen, but Shuffle T is like he's brought out the first ever multi-syllabic rhyming dictionary i i did i saw it i want to buy it just to have it as an artifact yeah just, you know just to like just because like 20 years from now i want to be like i have that book that shuffle team made <laughs> yeah I, i've got a copy here but if i come over to i battle i'll get one for you man and uh, it's like like it over. rhyming is so easy that's like the easiest part to me <laughs> You know, like that's like it'd be one thing if it was a book full of punchlines. That's yeah. hard. <laughs> you know, like the the rhyming the words is like the easiest part. That's like the easiest and most fun. Like I don't need anyone to do that for me. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a cool book, man. And like Marlo, I think I think Marlo might be like directing like he might be like a director now in terms of not movies as such, but He's a he's a director of like some form of video content anyway, so I think they're just a bit a bit busy and like yeah, I think they might have just achieved everything that they wanted to. From yeah, that. well, yeah, exactly, and that's that's the thing, you know. Uh, what, what are you gonna do? How much? How how many how many battles can you take? Like a lot of these legends do have to retire someday, man. Yeah, no, definitely, but yeah. I mean, I didn't even put Tony D on the card either, which he's a bit of a right. UK legend. But yeah, man, I'd love to see it anyway. It's probably the event that I'd like to see the most at the moment as well, because it just guarantees quality from every battle. So it'd be great. But yeah, I mean, like in terms of the, the music related questions, man, like what would you say is the best? live act that you've ever seen in terms of like shows or gigs that you've been to um maybe the maybe flaming lips okay nice flaming 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 lips like they're uh i've so i've I've seen a couple iterations of the flaming lips live but their shows live are so ridiculous have you ever been to a flaming lips show i haven't no dude like just the the stage design especially nowadays um because they've always done weird shit they've always you know like had like the little hamster balls and it'll go out on the crowd and stuff like that but like in the last couple of years i feel like they've taken all of the like technology that all of the edm acts and shit use and just gave it to like their hippie artists and when they when they perform man the fucking stage is just transformed they have like it's crazy i'll st- you got to check some videos out of like what the stage looks like when they perform. Um, It's, it makes, it makes like, it makes like whatever the best, like electronic music festivals, light show and stuff like that. It makes that seem not cool because 
this is just like that quality, but like cooler art, you know? It's just like more hippie shit. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll check that out, man. And uh, I like them as a band as well. So I, I would like yeah, to they're, see Yeah, they're too. great. They're a great band, man. So yeah, you definitely check them out. Definitely. Um, and is there is there like any lesser known musicians that you're a big fan of right now that myself or the listeners might not be aware of? Not that I could think of. Um, I just, I think like I've stopped listening to new music lately in the last three or four years. I used to be neurotic about how I consumed music. I used to feel like I have to know everything that ever came out. And now I feel like I just end up listening to like Eddie's music all day, pretty much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Eddie I on repeat. And, and like the same things that I used to listen to. I, I read a, I read some study somewhere about how in your like mid to late twenties, the amount of new music you accept in just dramatically decreases. You just like basically stop. Um, like whatever, whatever your, your first 20 or so years that formulates your music taste and like those sensors can't you know i'm sure they can change but like people just are not accepting after that many years i gotta look at the study i'm i'm big into research design so i don't want to talk out my ass right now but yeah i'm definitely not letting as much new music in anymore the other thing too man is like i think I used to I used to spend so much time looking for music and trying to like learn as much I can. Now it's like I feel like it's that has just become another task when I'm already trying to keep up with fucking so much battle rap and shit. Like there's just so much to listen to, man. Yeah. Um and like my dude, my worst fear is like you you know, I used to be much more paranoid about this than I am now, but I never want to write something and just say some shit that somebody has just said or something, you know, and it happens all the time. Um, but I'm, I get so paranoid about that. So then I really do feel like I have to listen to everything, you know, um, and like, especially things that are dropped on main stuff. Um, I'm like, uh, what the fuck am I, you know, you got, I got to check some KOTD stuff out. Cause I don't want to say a fucking punchline that someone else has said. So I just end up consuming unhealthy amounts of battle rap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling, man. I'm with you there to be honest. I, I don't know, dude. I don't know how people fucking do it because I like, I feel like I still don't watch anywhere near enough. Like I, I don't get a chance to watch shit and I still spend way too much time. Yeah, yeah, I listening know, Listening to stuff and watching stuff, so. There's there's certain leagues that I've kind of unsubscribed th- from on YouTube now because I wasn't enjoying what they were putting out as much, so I've cut down a lot, and I'm still probably watching, like, two or three battles a day, so it's... Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in, I'm in like, a writing period, and when I'm in a writing period, I watch more, at least in the, when I'm starting to write. Yeah. Um, like early on in the writing phase, I end up watching more. So like right now I'm at a point where I'm watching a ton, but if I'm not writing, I'm I, honestly, I can't even be watching because it's just like fucking overload. Um, yeah. Just how much of one fucking medium can, can you do? So nice, man. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of Eddie at the moment as well. So that's a great shout. And, one of he's my so, he's so fucking good at music it's disgusting yeah i agree one of my aims for the show long term is like once i've built the subscribers up a bit i want to do a weekly show talking about battlers music more just cuz i feel like there's so many battlers that make good music and it often gets overlooked yeah. by battle fans so i want to try and help on that front if i can but yeah, Eddie's one of the ones that I'll be pushing the most, I think. That um that track that he did, it's him, Chase Moore, and Pass. They did a track called Undecided. It's yep. like I must have listened to that like 
hundreds of times. Like, yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, they did that. That was the Ruin Your Day thing, right? I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was like their intro for a while. I think. But yeah, I love that track, man. It's incredible. But like the the final three questions, really, they're they're completely random. But have you have you got a favorite sports team? Favorite sports team? Yeah, I. I... I'm I'm a basketball fan, um, so I, I grew up a Knicks fan, unfortunately. But I'm I'm now a Milwaukee Bucks fan. I root for the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. Um, pretty aggressively in the last like five or six years. Right. I um I don't I don't follow basketball too much, but I used to be quite good at it as a kid because I'm I'm like six foot six, so it just <laughs> kind of came naturally, but. It's um, I, I I don't know if you'll like this, but my team's the Timberwolves, so probably <laughs> the rivals. But <laughs> no, that's fine. They're okay. They're good in <laughs> good in my book. Nice. But um, are you a like a, a football fan then? Uh yeah, I'm a Steelers fan. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'm like the American sports I haven't been accessible over here for most of the time that I've been growing up but in the last like year or so NFL's got really popular over here and they now do like a weekly highlight show for like two hours on like mainstream TV so yeah I I could I could see that the NFL uh is trying to get their get some uh some foreign money so I'm not surprised yeah the the NFL, my favorite nonprofit organization in America, the NF, the National Football League. <laughs> according according to tax codes, they are a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to America. Yeah, fair point. But I've I've become like a huge fan of it over the last year. So, and then, yeah, I'm gonna be watching pretty much religiously from now on but <laughs> I've um I'm, I've become a bit of a Chicago Bears fan. I was going to say what's your team? Yeah, I'm 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 a spoiled Steelers fan because the Steelers have won so much in my life. So I've in the last couple of years it's like I've faded out of watching football intensely cuz I'm just spoiled. You know, I grew up a Yankees fan, we won a million world series and then I just kind of stopped following. I think the fact that I never got a basketball championship has just made me such an like a die-hard basketball fan. Yeah. No, I can understand that. That's fair enough, man. Um if so if you could pick anywhere in the world for your next holiday or your next trip abroad, where would you go? Um, you know, it sucks, man. Um, I would, I would probably, I would probably go to Italy. I'd probably do a trip that I might do this summer. We'll see if, if the world fucking exists. Um, but I think I'd probably, I'd probably go to Italy. I want to go to the beach. So probably the Amalfi coast. Um, but I have a, I have a tattoo appointment in Italy in July. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go now, obviously, because, who the fuck knows what the world is allowed to do? Yeah, and Italy have been hit really hard with this kind of. Pandemic. Yeah, Italy's Italy's like the only place that's been hit as hard as where I'm coming from. So yeah. I'm like coming from the part that's more fucked up to the like second most fucked up part. So yeah, so doubt I'll be getting there, but no, fingers crossed, though, man. But I mean, we're we were meant me and my girlfriend were meant to be going to a music festival in Croatia this year, which is, I think the festival is, is about a four hour drive from the Italian border. What's um, the name of the festival? Outlook. Mm. So it's, it, it's kind of like there, there's quite a lot of hip hop there. Um, there's a lot of like roots and reggae and dub music, yeah. um, drum and bass music, stuff like that. But it's um, that actually got called off this morning. So, not surprised. 
it, it's I think that was for September as well. So it, it's not looking great over here at the moment, to be fair. But fingers crossed, man. I hope you uh hope you get to make it over. And Italy's one of the only countries in Europe that I've not been to as well. So I'm definitely with you there. I need to go at some point. But where's the where's like your favourite place that you've visited so far? Um, I haven't done that much world traveling. Um, I really haven't. I've I've moved around within the U.S. a lot, but I haven't done much international traveling. Okay. Is there like have you got a favorite city in the U.S.? Uh, probably New Orleans. I lived in New Orleans for a couple of years, and I love New Orleans. Awesome. Yeah, that's. If I come to the states, like. New Orleans is one of the places that I'm desperate to go. So we we've been we've been Lex and I have like talked about the potential of doing a, a New Orleans event there. He he's always like, go find a venue and find a you know go get do the legwork. Um, and I obviously never do, but I would love to to have an event there. Um, they, there's some there's actually some talented local battle rappers there too that go like under the radar. So. A, a New Orleans I battle card would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't think I know any battlers from New Orleans. Actually, I know officials from there. Yeah, uh, official. Um, official is and official is fucking amazing. Official's probably my favorite female battle rapper. I think. Yeah, I, I think I. I. There's yeah, a. I think I'd agree. There's an. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ha Double. He's he's pretty um he's pretty successful. He's been on he battled I think Excel on I Battle. I thought he was on, from Texas actually, but I suppose it's not he's, too far yeah, New, apart. New New Orleans, yeah, he's a New Orleans guy. Right. They got they got a they got some and Lex has been actually I can't remember the one. There's some kid from New Orleans right now who Lex keeps posting about uh doing the like Crucible auditions. Some with a T. But Lex is excited about him. But yeah, that would okay. be a great that'd be a great place for an event. Definitely. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's a good answer, man. But the um the final question of the show, man, is this one's brought up some terrible answers so far as well. But <laughs> you you can pick one sweet and one savory, but what are the go to munches? Um, one sweet and one savory. Um, s- sweet, maybe meth. <laughs> it's a great treat, but it, it, it is then, bad for your teeth, man. And then savory, maybe like human flesh. Okay. How did that compare with other people's answers? It's still a better answer than chocolate <laughs> raisins, to be honest. So. <laughs> <sighs> yeah it's not it's not the worst answer i've had to be honest That's but yeah good. i mean meth is a great treat man but you, you've got to look after your teeth it's not good for your teeth i know i know be man. Moderation. I, I, you know that's i really do look after your teeth is going to be my motto for the rest of my life should be you only get one set man but no, I, I mean, apart from that, that's that's pretty much everything that I go through on the show, man. But is there kind of anything that you wanted to plug on the show or do you want any kind of social media links or anything in the description for just, the video? No, just the iBattle app as always. And, you know, if 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 you've listened to this whole thing and haven't watched me versus louis or me versus real sick i'm very surprised i'm pretty shocked Um, yeah so if you haven't you should but (laughs) definitely no but sean thank you very much for taking the time to come on man we've we've, i think we've gone for pretty much three hours as well (laughs) it's crazy yeah it's been a lot of fun man I, i appreciate your time but if there's um for anything that you need promoting over here in the UK, please do give me a shout, man, and I'm happy to help. But apart sure, from that, man. I hope you stay safe over there and uh, hopefully I'll catch you at an iBattle event when this is all over. I hope so, man.
nice. But yeah, thanks again, man, and take care. All right, see you later. Bye, man.